daylight, I can read just fine, but if the light's off... Yeah, like tonight? I can't yeah. see anything. Yeah. I don't think it's my eyes. I think it's just my eyes. <coughs> That's right. So this is the list in here, right? Based two out of town, they don't meet the These are the criteria. two out of town? Yes, they don't meet the criteria. And then we have five town departments. Five town departments are asking for 25, <laughs> and then there are 25 for this stock, and then receive one. Day. So five town departments, 25. And then the other entities get 25 in each. This is what? There's one way of looking at that, right? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting um, today, Tuesday, December 5th. Um, we uh, opened uh, an executive session earlier to discuss stat strategies respect to collective bargaining updates to the, with the town manager relative to police, fire, dispatch, and DPW unions because a uh, open meeting may have had de detrimental effects on the bargaining positions of the board. Um, and uh, we also discussed some uh, contract negotiations with non union employees. So, um, Sticking with uh, tradition, we'll uh, uh, open up public session with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay, public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody in our audience who'd like to come up? Come on, Ed, run up, enter, and sign in, please. Welcome. Okay. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> First time I've been here, so. Um, Leanne LaTavis West. I live at 48 Blueberry Lane. I've been in town for about six years. Um, we have a situation in the backyard. I have sent you all a picture of it. I wasn't sure of what you all knew, if it, what it was. Uh, the adjoining neighbor behind me for the last six years that I've been in the house has built up a junkyard. His way of now covering up instead of taking the stuff out of our property is putting a black plastic tarp up it's at least over 20 feet high and whatnot. Um, it's a nuisance right now because it's the first thing I see when I turn in my driveway and it's the last thing I see before I go to bed. So what I'm looking for is some support to get it back, get it off, our, you know, between our property line, get it down. I don't wanna see that up, but again, we have to rectify how much stuff is back on the property again. It just seems every each month or every other month, something new is around and on the property. I actually took pictures today. I sent them to the town so they could see um, more has come on property. So, but I'm just looking for your support, ideas, something at this point. Um, yeah, that's a that, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, we've got. Um, Zoning enforcement. I know that I've seen some of the emails, and I know that we have a zoning enforcement officer went out there. That's I, you know, I, I don't believe that that's um, selectmen. I don't know what, what the board of right. selectmen could actually do. I, I know that you've spoken with the town manager, um, and um, you know we've we do have some nuisance uh, a nuisance bylaw that we did pass last year, um, but um, if somebody's not breaking the law, I don't know what what I can actually say, but. Um. But it's, a, I mean, it's a nuisance for, you're com I'm coming home and I'm seeing a black tarp. No neighbor should do that. I mean, I have the other neighbors asking me what that is in my backyard. 
I mean, every neighbor now is asking what's going on. They knew that there is a junkyard, supposable junkyard behind me, as you'd see the pictures I've sent. So I just can't continue living there and looking at this thing day by day. If I might ask, is yes. the, are, are the materials on his property or on your property? They're on his property, on his property. but I have a be my side, I can see full frontage. Any of the other houses that surround him, no one can see in except me. Right, but the, but the offensive material and the tarp is, is on his land. It's on his land. It's right at the uh, rock wall where it breaks between our land. And, and have you been, you have been in touch with the zoning enforcement officer and asked if there is any uh, regulation or method of relief? I have been, um, I actually had, they were on property and saw the tarp firsthand because that was the first time I brought it up and, and they did see it firsthand and then they saw all the stuff that was on property again. And did they have any, uh, anything to offer in terms of answers that there is anything, any regulatory issue that's, that's, that he's breaking? Well, laws breaking. exactly. I'm um, going through now the bylaws, which I did. I went through all the bylaws just so you guys know. Um, and I understand there's buffers, then fencing. There's fencing and there's, you put trees up. I get that to, buy, to just block out, you know, between neighbors. But now there is nothing about hanging a black tarp up and you've got three trees that are erected at this point. So if any of those trees fall, they're not falling on his property, they're gonna fall on my side because they're bending now coming towards me. I mean, I know that we did look at a type of nuisance regulations last year. I don't think we got very far with it. No, no, um, we, well, we did pass one. We, we, it, it, was, it was watered down from what came from the Zoning yeah. Advisory Committee I mean, because um, some people thought that it was kind of draconian. Well, um, but I, uh, I don't know whether that but it should it shouldn't be viewed as draconian in my view if we have the property rights of one individual at odds with the property rights of another individual I mean we all if you own property you have rights a lot of rights but you also have to be respectful in my view of the property rights of the person abutting you they have rights as well and those are seven hundred fifty thousand eight hundred thousand dollar houses but her property value is not seven hundred fifty or eight hundred thousand dollars if she has to sell it tomorrow because she has a situation behind her. So what's happening there, in my view, is imposing on her property rights, and that's not something that she should have to solve. I think the town should solve that in some fashion. That's why last year I brought that nuisance bylaw to the board of selectmen from the zoning advisory committee, and um, it was modified by our board. Well. Just because we did it last year doesn't mean we can't try it again this year. I guess we can. We haven't fixed it yet. If we have a property, if we have a taxpayer in Hockington whose property values are being lowered because of the activities of another person who, I mean, who has another person who has activities with, that are also property rights issues, there's something wrong there. I don't know what the answer is, but I, I guess I don't accept the fact that we tried it last year, didn't get very far, so we're done. No, well, it went to town meeting, what we had passed. It did pass. But, um, but it, was, it was, Elaine, would you, do, would you do me a favor and um, for our next meeting, could you bring that day, our previous, what, what we brought up to the board and see it? We'll, we'll take another pass at it. So I would assume that you've had a discussion with your neighbor and you two have uh, not, you, you guys don't agree. Uh, six years ago, I was sitting with my neighbor, my attorney, and he basically looked me in the eye and agreed to do, remove the stuff that was asked by the town, and he didn't. Mm -hmm. And five months went by, and I got more involved, and he hasn't, it's got worse, it goes from worse to better. And uh, it's in, like I said, it's in drones, like, yeah. I, we watch all this stuff come on and go off and come on. I mean, he's got two dumpsters up there right now. I don't know what he's doing with them. Is he a, is he a buyer and seller, or do you think he's doing this out of spite to No, you? I think he works for the dumpster company, is what I think, okay. because he does go to work very early in the morning like I do, so. Mm -hmm. 
you have room to put your own plantings <clears throat> so you can't see it? I have investigated. I called um, the fencing company, Brad Mayo, here in town. He has not called me back yet. I'm heading <coughs> over to Western Nurseries as well. My concern is you can't, I don't think it's going to withheld, hold a fence or trees inside in those woods. I mean, we have our own grass problems right now that's all stones and whatnot. So I'm not sure putting a fence or putting, I would love to put trees back there and then I would have, a, you know, issue kind of solve problem, but I don't know if it's going to withheld it. So now I'm going to put over $10,000 worth of trees in and they're all going to die because I just don't know what the soil is going to be like. The property behind her, I've been out there a couple of times, the property behind her is also elevated. So if she's sitting on her deck or sitting in her kitchen and looking out the window, it's up and you see it all. So you'd have to have a pretty darn high tree okay. or fence. Uh, let's move. Okay, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll take another look at the uh, uh, at the bylaw and see if we can um, bring another one to town meeting. See if we can help out to some extent. Okay, but I guess my concern right now is getting that tarp down because I don't want to look at it. <coughs> what did the um, we're not Chuck, we're not an enforcement agency right. here, we so should. we can't do anything in terms of that. What, okay. Uh, what did Chucky or or Mike Shepard, Chucky Cadillac or Mike Shepard, what was the end result of their investigation? The well, Chuck and Norm both came out just recently mm -hmm. and saw the tarp, and I believe Chuck, they were going back to look in the bylaws to see okay. if anything reflected on fencing or uh, screening. Mm -hmm. And in your bylaws, there is nothing about a tarp per se, but there's trees and fences. Yeah. So I haven't heard a back okay. as far as that. Thank you very much for coming. So what, 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 what would our action plan be? Should I do this at um, future agenda items, or what do you want to do? Well, I, I'm already putting on the, as a future agenda item looking at the nuisance bylaw and see if we can we have, we'll take a, I'll, I'll bring the same same one that I brought to the board last year. Uh, that that uh, it's, it's a combination of a couple <coughs> other towns. So it's, it's gone through scrutiny with other towns right around us. I believe we picked that uh, it's Upton. Upton is one of them, and um, let's take a look at it and uh, let's see where we see where we stand with it again. And um, if it uh, passes, I want to back to town meeting and and uh, um, general bylaws take effect immediately and they they don't have uh, grandfathering. But if it goes through the if it goes through zoning, then then anything previous uh, is grandfathered and and it doesn't. Uh, doesn't take effect okay. and we're also going to be discussing it at the uh, zoning advisory committee meeting tomorrow I just think it's important that we as you know the chief elected officials in the community message that we want to be fair to everybody and I'm not sure she's feeling that that's our message right now we're just saying we can't enforce it well I think we should we should try to message that we want to try and fix this problem somehow, some way. Right, but to Todd's point, we're we're we, we set policies. We don't we don't enforce. We set policy. So we what that's what we're trying to do is through a lane. I'm going to we'll get this back and see if we can change policy. Where there's nothing, we, you know, unless we want to go over there and break the law and cut the thing down ourselves. You know, if there was a tarp hung between you're your house right. and your neighbors, how would you be feeling? Right you're absolutely right, but we can't. I, you know, please I actually don't know how she's feeling because I have something very similar at my place, and I can only imagine how you've handled it. No, nope, you cannot imagine how I've handled it. I've been more <laughs> diplomatic than I have ever been raised to be. Um, so I understand exactly. I know exactly what you're going through, um, and I I share your frustration. Um, Mine is, I, this isn't about me, but, so I share your frustration. I understand that you're, you're going through a tough time, and I know how frustrating it can be. Um, I don't know if, if, uh, if we, as a board, have the ability to make that right. Uh, I would love to hear this board say that we do, and then we can both take advantage of that. But, um... You know, this isn't something I don't. I don't think, based on our the board's conversation right now, I don't think it's something that's at its end right now. I, I think that we're we're going to look into it, and we're not going to leave you hanging. I got your pictures today, and uh, you know, 
it was nice to see other people going through what I'm going through, uh, to be honest with you. Misery loves company. Yes. Um, but we will, uh, I, I think that we will absolutely follow through with it. And and uh, by all means, if, if you're not satisfied with, with, uh, with, you know, the channels that you've been taking, please, you know, keep in touch with us and, and hold our feet to the fire. If we don't get back to you, to, uh, back to you in a certain amount of time, hold our feet to the fire, let us know. Okay. Yeah, and my frustration is that I, I tried to get it through last year. I'd be glad to and we'll try and get we'll try and get it through again this year. <laughs> okay, um, is there anybody else that has anything? Oh, come on up. <clears throat> I'm uh, Michael Girardi at uh, 92 Spring Street in Hopkinton and uh, board director for the Live Forever organization. And my name is Jack Nealon and I uh, live at 50 Front Street here in Hopkinton and I'm the president of the Live Forever organization. We uh, want to take a few minutes and give you an update on what the organization has done in the last year. We were, I was here last year for um, around a similar time. We gave you a little bit of update on what we're doing. Um, we were here last time to get petition for the permit for the, uh, the race and that we had. Um, just a quick update on what we've done over the, the last 12 months. It's been a, uh, a busy year for us and a good growth year for us. A um, couple highlights. Um, we did um, have our fifth annual um, the Frevin Race and Fun Fest um, in September. Um, that was uh, another success for us. We're up over 500 paid um, um, registrants um, for the race. It's uh, our largest fundraiser for the organization. Um, we had great support from you guys with the issuing of the permits and the police department and the fire department. It was um, a tremendous success. We um, also have taken on uh, two executive directors. We first started with a three month contracted period with an ED um, and now have moved to a full time um, paid ED for the organization. We have enough going on with what we're doing um, to, uh, to warrant that. Um, just a refresher on the, the mission of the organization is we provide um, temporary housing for families of, um, with children that have congenital heart, heart disease, um, which has deep ties to um, a bunch of us in the organization. And what we do is we take the funds we raise throughout the year and the donations and we, we put those down on temporary housing situations and this year we again were able to fund a an apartment that we fund for needy families that come into the city at children's and put them up if they can't spend the money they need for some of these durations of the uh, procedures they go through and so they do is they petition children's for help and where they manage a flow of families into the apartments and we pick that up full cost um, when they're um, selected by children's. So we did that again, that was the second year we did that. Um, we've now made a decision to move into a second um, housing situation. We're gonna do it, do it this year with Tufts. We just made this decision um, last week at a board meeting. So now we'll fund a second housing situation. The goal here is to actually have housing over time where, where we actually own it and we manage it and fund it. But these are um, planned steps to, to get us up that curve um, and have enough funds to, to do that. So we, we've done that now with Tufts. And um, we've also decided to move to a second annual fundraising event, which will be in March. Um, you'll we'll start seeing some of that, and that's on March 3rd. That's a, a, red, a red tie gala. Um, where we're going to try to again raise some funds um, that way. So it's been a busy year for us. Um, we also were fortunate enough to get two two bibs last year for the marathon. Um, last year, um, we did um, as we have done for the last four years. Every time we're given a bib, we do something with it from fundraising. And last year, we raised just under 18k of, of on those two bibs. That was the second highest fundraising organization of all the bibs that we that you guys give out and ladies give out to, to everybody so we're, we're doing taking advantage of the opportunities we um, are given and this year we have a application for three bibs um, this is the first year we have actually more runners than 
than bibs. Usually we we get a bib or we get two bibs and we've we've got those. Um, you know we'll we'll get volunteers to do that. But this year we we actually can fund fund more. So if you can give us anything more than one or two or three, we'll take whatever we could get. Um, and we are we do have a track record of doing good with it. So um, it'll be a, a put to good use. So. Um, with that, Jacko. Um, I think that anything, covers it. I think that covers it. That. Um, um, no, I mean the the bibs year over year have been a, a nice cornerstone of fundraising for us. So, you know, you guys are in a fortunate position to be able to allocate them as as you see fit. So, we just want to let you know in your decision making process that you know we do have the runners and the runners have the capacity to raise funds for the town and the organization. And for us, that's a good thing. And I'm assuming it's a good thing for you folks as well. Any questions? No questions. Just, you know, I mean, I want to say congratulations, but really just commend you on the work you're doing and uh, how you've expanded this over the years and uh, just the lives that you're touching. Uh, you know, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It's, nice to, it's yeah. nice to see um, when, when a tragedy that you experienced how you can turn that, you know, with the tragedy that you experienced, how you turn it into such a positive thing to, to help so many people for it. It's, uh, it's a great thing that you're doing. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, but what a great thing that you're doing. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Anybody else? Busy night. How's it going? Good, you? Well, good. Um, so, <laughs> let's kick it. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. There you go. All right. So, um, hi, we're the uh, Class of 2019 officers, and uh, we're here once again, uh, like we were last year, for uh, just you know, delegation of marathon bibs. And uh, we were able to raise, uh, I believe, around, what was it, 2,100? 2, 2,500? 2, 2,500. From uh, last year with our marathon bib. And uh, we definitely plan on using it towards uh, class legacy and improving the high school. And we uh, we're just here again to to uh, be in the race. Yeah, we've seen a lot what other classes have done with um, some of their funds for the legacy funds, and we've been inspired to put an emphasis on that in our fundraising. And this is a part of that fundraising for that. I know the class of 2017 that just graduated. They put in a new bench outside, a beautiful new rug in the atrium because um, that one was getting kind of ripped up and. Uh, and now it's really beautiful, um, among other things that they put in the high school. So um, by allocating a bid to uh, the class of 2019, it's a direct improvement into the, the school system um, to just go after the little things that maybe students notice, oh, that could be better, that could be improved upon. That's exactly what something like this will go towards. So. Who was the runner last year? Uh, Mr. Coffee. Jim Coffey. Jim Coffey? Yeah. Okay. Great. So. Yeah, and it was great to have someone, uh, obviously his daughter is in um, the class of 2019, it was great to have someone uh, representative of the class and go to the marathon. And I mean, of course you know people around Hoppington, but it was good to have someone, oh, you know, they're actually supporting the class of 2019, except I'm a part of. So I think it was, it was a great opportunity in that way too, along with the fundraising, so. Good guy. I have a student in the class of 2019 as well, and these guys do an awesome job on behalf of their grade. They really do. Uh, very visible in town and well done, guys. Well I can't done. believe you didn't you accuse yourself then. I know, I've got a direct conflict of interest yeah. here. <laughs> so, <do I. laughs> so, what'd you say? You raised two and a half thousand dollars last yeah. year? That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Maybe you get a little, maybe give you a couple more numbers, get out there, be a little bit more aggressive. You could raise enough to put in a turf field. <laughs> that would be an amazing Especially place after to get this year. <laughs> set your sights high. Yeah. high. We'll give you two numbers. Right in the that. center of the field. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> 2019. There you go. Sounds that's a good question. Idea, that's that's a perfect way to pay for that field. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But we're all going to behave tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Work. There we go. <laughs> the question is, who's who seat is going back? Okay. Thanks, guys. Do we have to sign in at all, or? No, that's no. fine. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll give you credit. It's uh, <laughs> it's on TV. Okay. You can watch it later. So tape it. Uh, anybody else want to come up? Come on up.
Hi, thanks. I'm sorry I was late. I just ran straight from work. Um, I'm representing the Hopkinton Education Foundation. I didn't realize I would maybe possibly need to speak or um, feel like I should speak, but we're also in the running for, um, I believe we requested two marathon bibs. And in case you don't know what we do and how we differentiate ourselves from the PTA, what we do is we're a granting organization where um, educators within the district from K to 12, all, all schools, uh, the educators will write us grants and we will determine based on our, um, our vision statement and mission statement if they fit within our criteria and then we'll fund the grants so that these teachers can start offering something innovative um, both in programming or in, um, in equipment that the district isn't able to fund for them. So um, some of the projects we've done in the past um, forgive me, I'm the high school liaison, so I know mostly what's going on in the high school, not some of the younger grades, but we funded the um, renovation of the library in the high school. We funded uh, an innovative math classroom this year. Last year, we um, funded the programming of the Fab Lab, which is a, a cross-curricular program that um, combines arts with engineering and technology. Um, we've always had a marathon bib in the past. This year we requested two. Last year our runner raised about $7,500. We're um, really hoping that we're um, um, under good consideration for at least one, preferably the two that we've requested, uh, so that we can keep funding innovation in our schools. Um, I had one other point I was going to make and I've completely lost it. But um, I appreciate your consideration on behalf of the Hopkinton Education Foundation. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'd say my daughter, my daughter loves that math classroom. She thinks it's just the coolest thing at the high school. Cool. Well, good. Now, anybody else want to come up? Okay. With that, we will get to the consent agenda. The uh, board so will consider approving the 11-21-17 Board of Selected Minutes. Does anybody have any changes to Second. the minutes? Obviously not. Okay, any further discussion? Maybe none. On your vote? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any, any nays? Okay. Um, okay, Hopkins Historic District Commission appointment. Board of Selectmen will consider the appointment of Beth Watson to the Hopkins Historic Commission with the term to expire June 30th, 2020. District Commission. What? District Commission. Is that right? Did, I, did I not say district? I'm sorry, I meant, I meant to say district. Right. Oh, come on up. Well, we met you last week. I know. I, I'm back. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Oh, no problem. Thanks for applying. No problem. So. You, you already told us all about yourself, yeah. and I you think you're wonderful. I know that Beth already has attended at least one of the meetings, and uh, I think they'd very much like to have her on the board. They, uh, you know, need, need to have a full complement there, and um, we, you know, had a good good interview with Beth uh, two weeks ago. And certainly, know she brings some excellent qualifications with her her degrees in preservation. So I think she'd she'd make an excellent uh, an excellent member. I hardly endorse her. So I'd like to move to accept Beth Watson as a, uh, I'd like to appoint Beth Watson to the Hopkins Historic District Commission uh, to a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Second. No sense in putting her through the ringer again. Excellent. Any further or discussion? Us. Mr. Chair. Are we sure we can't find anybody less qualified? <laughs> I have no Oh, we're going to get into this. Okay. this Mr. Chair, awesome. the democratic process at times can be messy and it can be frustrating. I'm really excited to see Beth back here tonight. Beth, thank you for coming back tonight. No problem, I'm actually headed over to the commission meeting after this. Thank you. You're right, do so a great you. job, and I really do appreciate you coming back. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. then let's, uh, let's get to a vote. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Any, any no's, abstentions? Okay, good, it passes unanimously. Thank, thank you. you so much, now you can get right over to the meeting. Sorry we took so long. Thanks, Beth. Okay. Okay. Mr. Sonner, will approve that? 
that's approved. Okay, can we go right to the, this isn't a, a, a public hearing or anything, can we go right to the marathon permit? Yes, correct. Okay, the Board of Southern will consider approving a parade permit from Doug Flannery, Director of Race Operations for the 2018 Boston Marathon and on Monday, April 16th, 2018. The expected number of participants is 30,000. The BAA requests permission to control and utilize roadway adjacent and adjacent sidewalks to conduct the race in a safe and controlled manner. Setting up areas in support of the race will commence Wednesday, April 11th at the Town Common and behind the high school and middle schools, including delivery and installing course signage, hydration stations, portable toilets, and medical stations, timing mats, mile markers, and other equipment. There'll be some road closures. Welcome. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, based on past tradition, um, it's our practice to invite Dorothy Farrett, the chair of the Marathon Committee, to sit alongside uh, the BAK representatives. Dorothy, how come you don't remember to come right up? Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, represent the Boston Athletic Association and to uh, request the uh, pray permit uh, granting the uh, 122nd running of the Boston Marathon on April 16th, 2018. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the Boston Marathon hasn't changed much in recent years besides the increased security posture and presence uh, following events of 2013. Uh, the vision is to continue to work in the same footprint of the roadway systems utilized last year, 2017, thus not impacting any additional roads. Uh, the 26.2 mile uh, course is a, it's a rolling course, point to point, starting here in Hopkinton and finishing uh, adjacent to the Boston Public Library in downtown Boston. The event will take place, like I said, on April 16, 2018. Field size is limited to 30,000 participants. Uh, we expect to have four waves, 7,500 runners in each of those waves. Start times will be similar to last year. We'll have a uh, 6 a.m. We'll have a start of the military marchers from the Army National Guard. We expect around 25 to 35 marchers to go down the course. No rucksacks. Uh, that's one of the uh, constraints that we put in, or restraints, I should say, we put in after 2013. Uh, of course, they have their own event out in uh, Concord with the Tough Ruck March. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's at 6 a.m. At 8.50, we'll have the mobility impaired uh, participants start down the course. Uh, 9.17, we'll have the men's wheelchair. At 9.19, we'll have the women's wheelchair. At 9.22, we'll have the hand cycle division. And at 9.32, we'll have the elite women start. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have the elite men with wave one. That'll be the first mass of runners going down the course, so the first 7,500 runners going down the course at 10 o'clock, and then every 25 minutes thereafter until we complete through wave four. So we'll have 10 o'clock, 10.25, 10.50, and 11.15 a.m. We expect the last runner to cross the start line at around 11.28. It's given us 13 minutes to get the last starter from wave four across the line. Uh, we also, based on the estimated uh, pace time, we expect that last runner to cross the Hopkinton Ashland Town line at approximately 11.55 a.m. and then the roads to reopen around 1.30 in the afternoon. The time limit is uh, six hours, so uh, that's how we do our calculations is based off of a six hour uh, time limit. Uh, we continue to use the Hopkinton's uh, school facilities and fields uh, for our athletes' village. Uh, permission has been granted to use the Cross Point CVS parking lots for our port johns our public address announcements, and our water supply area. It's the last water supply area before the participants go into the corral system. As always, we appreciate the strong support from the Hopkinton Police Department, the Fire Department, and uh, Public Works. Um, and as a formal matter, note that uh, we should include the right to exclusively control the uh, course roadway and the adjacent sidewalks. Uh, and other appropriate areas, as you mentioned before, for utilization of our, all of our water stations, our first aid stations, uh, mile markers, uh, and you know, our timing mats, and other official functions for the race itself. Uh, the fluid stations will be manned by the BAA uh, volunteers, and we'll have the American Red Cross uh, manning our uh, first aid stations, all of this under the auspices of the Boston Athletic Association. Uh, in order to, for the Boston Athletic Association to conduct this in a safe and successful marathon, 
uh, in, the, uh, in the surrounding cities and towns on April 16, 2018. On behalf of the BAA, I respectfully request that a parade permit or permission be granted to the Boston Athletic Association. We always appreciate the uh, generosity of the Board of Selectmen in granting this permit, and we're looking for that again this year. Any questions? Sure. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, the different waves that go off and the times that you're expecting them to take off and the bid numbers in each wave and that type of thing. So you're giving these ranges of bid numbers and, you know, I'll take wave one, for example. It's 101 to 7,700. Then wave two is 8,000 to 15,600. Are all the numbers issued between those in those ranges no they are not okay. no we reserve some for you know people that have to get bid reassignments okay. and so we keep some in you know, the pattern so that we uh, correspond to that wave or as close as we can to that wave okay mm -hmm. got it my concern was if you added up the ranges came out to uh 31,300 numbers uh, or runners rather than 30,000 so and then we also have, we expect a certain no-show rate too, so that's why if you look at the results that we'll typically have between 27 and 28,000 finishers, mm -hmm. so, but we permit up to 30,000 okay. for our field. Thanks. Mr. Hurd, our runner. Uh, I wish I was running next year. You're not running, like Brian? That. No, I don't no. think I'm gonna be allowed to. <laughs> Still not there. Uh, but excited about the race, and uh, I ran a mile today, so I'm getting there. Um, you know, the, the world's changing every day, and I don't want to get into security stuff here tonight, but I think there has to be a little bit more talk about security and, I think, moving it out. Again, not getting into too much detail here, but I think we need to move it out further. Um, so we should talk about that some more when we get to that point. But I'm just very concerned with what people use for weapons today, and I'd like to see us have more security. Okay. Ms. Ray. Um, well, just sort of a related question, not directly the marathon, but I did notice in our notes that the police department mentioned that there's often a, a training run that goes on a little beforehand with BAA support, uh, and that sometimes that permit has been applied for at the same time as this permit. We're going to do that, we're gonna do, we're we gonna do that, that. As, a, as, a, as a second motion. Okay, so that's that's in the pipeline because it so wasn't. We're going to do it tonight because it was a panic thing last year. Okay, if, okay, because it was not in our materials, so yeah, we've we, got that. We've got that yes. in the pipeline. Spoke, okay, yeah, I spoke then, to Mr. Grell then about never mind. Thank you. It's all good. We're, we're going to get that done fine too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I've been around the marathon for my whole life. I can honestly say that I have traditionally not run it, nor do I ever plan on running it. Um, last year was my first year officially involved as a selectman. Um, we have a, a, a person from town, his name's Bob Lavoy. He's a Marine Corps hero, you, you know, he's a, a, a hero. Mm -hmm. And he got the opportunity to meet General Dunford. And it was, I think, so I, I was able to sit and watch these guys talk. And I think it was as much of a, a joyous occasion it was for Mr. Lavoie, I think General Dunford, I was, I was put into my place by watching how interested and how, how he took all the stuff in from Mr. Lavoie as well. <clears throat> so the race is great, it puts Hopkins on the map and, and we love it and I appreciate it. But just to be able to see something like that and, and to have both people recognize what great people they are and, and knowing that Lavoie family, how it touched them. And, and uh, I just thought it, it was one of my greatest memories of the marathon to be there with Chuck Wallace standing right behind him when he shot the gun with both of them there. It was a, it was a great thing. And so as much as it's, it's great to have you guys run the race and the fundraising and things like that, that stuff that's off to the side that people don't see needs to be brought to the, the forefront because, because sometimes, sometimes that that uh, stuff off to the side means a lot more to, to a lot of people than it does people running 26 miles. So it's nice that you can so positively affect the town of Hopkins and, and our community. Uh, and I think it went mostly unrecognized, but I'd like to recognize it because I know how much it meant to the family. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was uh, quite an honor to have 
General Dunford here as well as Lieutenant General McConnell from the uh, Chief of Staff, the Army's Chief of Staff. Uh, he was here also, and so uh, uh, it, it was certainly uh, interesting with his social security detail and his uh, able to participate along with his daughter. Uh, and so uh, it, was, it was a great opportunity for uh, Bob Lavoie to meet General Dunford. And if I might just add for the 2018 uh, marathon, it is the 100 year anniversary of the 1918 uh, Boston Marathon, and what's interesting about that is the marathon uh, was not al almost kind of canceled, but what kept it alive and running for now the 122nd year this year is the mil military relay. And so we had uh, relay teams from around the area that actually competed. Uh, of course, the start then was in Ashland, and they ran in uniform carrying a baton from Ashland into Hopkinton to cover the 24.8 miles. So this year, we're actually going to replicate that to a certain extent by inviting veterans, active duty, reserve, retired, military spouse, because I think that's just as important to take care of the home front as it is to go you know, to the tip of the spear, by having a veteran from each of the eight cities and towns run their leg of the marathon all the way through. So uh, we're putting that together as we speak. So. I think that'll actually help with the theme of service and the theme of service of the Boston Marathon this year has to do with uh, recognizing support and service for the volunteers, public safety, and to our servicemen and women. Yeah, I, I just love it because the, you know, it, and people are, are seeing it more and more that the, that the Boston Marathon is more than a 26.2 mile run for, uh, for Hopkinton. You know, it, it's, it's heard so much stuff from, from desire to inspire, you know, with a new cross country course, and we're building another one for the high school. You know, the International Marathon Center, and just the the, the whole health and well being of Hopkinton, and how people are really taking care of themselves, our trail system, and everything else. You know, we we it, it's such a symbiotic relationship between the BAA and and uh, and, and Hopkinton, and and, and you know, we, hope, we hope to see it continue for years to come. One of the things that I always say is the most touching to me is when we honor the veterans on Patriots Day. Mm -hmm. And to have Mr. Lavoie there firing the gun with his family and some of the fire department and everything surrounding him, you know, brought tears. But you could see every year you see it means so much and the VA has supported us uh, gathering some of the local veterans since 2002 now. and. Over the years, you have stories for so, from so many, but it's extra special when you see a man of that caliber and what he gave to this country um, and what it meant to him. And mm -hmm. he still talks about it now, so. Yeah. And what it meant to the family, and that's just one thing. In addition, you know, it's the community involvement as well that brings such special memories for so many. And, you know, the BA has supported all that over the years, and we thank them. Yeah, and I'm honored as a 31-year military veteran to actually be in this position where I can help support our military and come to uh, the Boston Marathon and participate each year. And, and with that, you know, we've done, I think, a really good job of promoting the military uh, and ec getting some equity across the board for all the branches of the service to participate and come join us every single year. So we certainly extend that with shadow runs, you know, abroad and, and how we, you know, when people come back from deployments, offering the opportunity to, to run the Boston Marathon since, you know, they may not have the opportunity to qualify at another race uh, because of their dedicated time and service abroad. Yeah, and then with all, of our, all the sister cities that we've, that we've um, gained recognition with and, uh, and then the, the Semper Fi Foundation and their runs that uh, in, up in Washington and how they recognize us also. So with that, um, would does Mr. Kamala, yes. Yes, um, in relation to the comment raised by Mrs. Wright, part of the discussion today is for the board to make a determination on whether to support or not support the parade permit for the practice run. My understanding um, through conversations with the chair um, is that the the BAA is submitting the application as part of this application tonight and has identified uh, the 26.2 Foundation, which is a local organization, as the implementing agency. 
for the practice run. Yes. For the practice run. Which is three weeks prior. March. It is three yeah. weeks prior. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. In fact, I was going to ask for the specific date so that that can be built into the motion. I think it's March 25th. March 25th. Okay. So, so Sunday or Saturday? It'll be a, uh, Sunday. Sunday. Sounds right. So, okay. So then we do not have any written documentation about that to go on. So we'll just, this will just be verbal to the board. Correct. So, so but you're, what I think Mr. Kamala is suggesting is 26.2 is the um, entity that is going to take the reins and make sure the concerns of the board and the community are met on that training run day, okay. which is clean up and Correct. all the other things that we've talked about quite a bit. Right. So yeah. in other words, some of the things that are usually included on that application and answered, which we don't have in front of us, will be answered and, and accounted for by 26.2. Mm -hmm. How and can we vote on something that hasn't been actually filed, though, if we don't have the filing in front of us? Well, the, the request for the training run was filed, but the stipulations that typically come from a request for a, pre, a parade permit with everybody weighed in on, I don't think all well, that's part of it. Well, wouldn't it be possible just to yeah, vote on the BAA one tonight and, and postpone the 26.2 of the training room till our next meeting? It's not well, until Well, it was just March. A, it, the reason why would, it's the, came, coming from the police department, they asked if we could, if we could do it at the same oh, time. Oh, I, I thought they were simply asking, like, where was it? They were kind of checking on because it. Because last year, last year we ended up doing it. Right, I understand that, but why, why, why can't we just get that paperwork in order and vote on that one next week? I mean, why do we have to vote on something that we don't? Well, yeah. just have we, in front we of had us? them here. That's why I just figured we put there. Them there are plenty of opportunities okay. between now and March when the police department will be represented here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We would uh, need Doug to come back. I mean. No, the 26.2 is taking it over, so no. we're well, we, we have not to spoke to the 26.2 Foundation about, you know, the whole organization. We haven't had a chance to actually formalize that as far as... So yeah. that's further reason for us to push yeah. that piece off. I'm okay with that. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. I request a motion to, per to approve the parade permit for the 2018 Boston Marathon on April 16, 2018, as outlined in the application. <coughs> so moved. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, so as far as the security goes, in years past, uh, depending on the year, uh, the board has had executive session discussions specific to security. Is that the plan for 2018? Yes. Because I don't think we did that last year, did we? There was an update, yes, from the... In exec? Public safety, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so as long as that's going to happen, I'm good. I, I guess I would just suggest that if... if you're thinking that you need to have a discussion to uh, alter the outcome, then we should probably have a discussion with at least our local law enforcement on the earlier side of that, so that it can be built into any kind of plan if you expect changes. So I think last year it was a briefing, and well, I believe we changed everything just a week before we we went through and you had a for re revamp, and that's why we had the briefing. We had a full revamp of all security just uh, like six days before. I'm confused about that. Yeah. Um, I don't think we had a full revamp. I think we had a solid plan in place, and I think there might have been some last minute additional things added, but I don't think we reset the whole thing. But uh, to your point, I do think that maybe I could uh, get with. Um, as one member and just share my ideas with as one member with with the team uh, again I don't want to get into it here but it just okay yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to talk about security here yeah no. again to be clear to members of the public the public safety departments have been intimately involved in this process so far they have provided supportive comments regarding the application tonight. And as in past years, the conversations between public safety, the BAA, and the Marathon Committee, and every other stakeholders will continue almost on a daily basis from now going to the day of the marathon. And this will include, I think, as the board has requested, updates to the board by the public safety chiefs. 
Thank you, Mr. Carlo. Okay, any further discussion? No, any? sorry. Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Opposing any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Okay, if a second one, I request a motion to approve road closures for the 2018 Boston Marathon as approved by the Police Department working in conjunction with the BAA. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Yeah. Chair, for the yes. for the practice run, we're going to put a future agenda item on we'll our next on meeting. We'll put off the next meeting. And we'll have 26.2 come for that, and we'll go through that. The BAA and the 26.2 Foundation. Again, to be clear, the BAA will be making the application. The 26.2 Foundation will be the implementing agency. At least that's my understanding from my conversations with each. Well, so does Mr. Flannery have to come again? No. I mean, I just want to make sure that we have the, the application completed, mm -hmm. the paperwork done, and all the questions answered, and someone who's going to be responsible, which would be 26.2, here to take responsibility. But I, I don't know that we have to ask the BAA to make another trip, do we? Can we get that done without? We work offline with the chair. Yeah, I would not need to, I wouldn't have any questions for the BAA no. for that practice run. I would have questions of 26.2 exactly. if they're going to step up. And run. Exactly. And I think so. that's where we have to start talking about the actual application of the permit. Where does the permit reside or who actually applies for the permit? Because it is technically not a Boston Athletic Association event. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a training run. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't ask participants for uh, funding as a you know to come and do this and so the, the actual mm -hmm. to formally put the permit forward or the you know, application forward is something that we're trying to make sure that we all understand is who has the responsibility where is the liability you know if something happens Who's insurance exactly right. everything that goes with this yeah so, so it sounds like the BAA is not the practice run group it's 26.2 so I don't know about no, the insurance. No, no, that's not true. No, that, uh, okay, well, I'll get into discussions with you later. No, no. The, the BAA was, was, is going to pay for, pay for everything. Everything they just didn't want to deal with the, according with my, my, my discussions with Mr. Grilk, they didn't want to deal with the, the logistics of the, and, and the get, getting all the, all the um, charity runners together and all that. So I hear what you're saying. But I heard what Mr. Flannery was saying, and it's two different things. So I think we have to do some more work here, folks, okay. right? Because that's not Be so, there's something am amiss here. Because there were a couple things amiss last year, and I think we want to make sure we get all the ducks in a row so that you know everything goes off as planned smoothly. Cleanup happens. Um, I don't know who's responsible for what, but. You know, different aspects of it. Someone needs to take ownership, and that's why I think we're not ready to do that tonight. Yeah, he was looking. The, the, uh, Mr. Broke was looking for a facilitator because it was no good. deed goes unpunished, kind of a thing. Right. For them and last year. But this is also the charity program training day as well, right? and there's busloads of people coming out from organizations that they organize to come out here and come at us as well, right? right? right. All good, mm -hmm. but that's not. Those organizations get the numbers from the BAA, but those aren't the BAAs, not those organizations. Those and that's where there's, a, I think, a significant difference here um, that we'll have to sort out. Okay. Thank you. We very might much. see you again. Thank you. Okay. Continued public, uh, posted public hearing tax classification hearing. The board will hold a public hearing to determine the percentage of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real, st real and personal property in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 56, as certified that by the Commissioner of Revenue through the Hopton Board of Assessors property assessment of full and fair cash value. Valuation, oral written comments from the public will be accepted at the hearing. I think we, we, we only had uh, one aspect of this, right, Mr. Camaro? Yes, um, through the chair, um, John Ness, the principal assessor is here. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we promised the board uh, the uh, financial information that goes along with this process, and John is here to report on the outcome uh, of that financial process. 
Welcome. Good evening. Uh, only two slides for you tonight. The uh, current tax rate is $16.80 per thousand. The proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2018, subject to Department of Revenue approval, is $16.90. This is what you need to do tonight. I uh, need you to um, vote whether or not to have an open space discount, a residential exemption, a small commercial exemption, and to decide whether you want a single tax rate or a split tax rate. Okay, I remember it is. <laughs> no, you said that last week. It's the last month. Yes. Or whatever. Two weeks ago. I don't remember saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, then, he did. Yeah, but a part that, they, yeah, they, he, he read you your. Uh, your words from last year. Um, and, and Mr. Chair, if I may, sorry. Um, included in your packet is the FY18 financial information that was compiled by the Finance Department. And then tonight, we also shared with you uh, a memo from uh, Christopher Sandini to the town manager indicating that due to a last minute change where the Department of Revenue uh, services stepped in and reclassified two companies as manufacturers just yesterday. Our new growth has been reduced by approximately $100,000. That in turn reduced the town's excess levy capacity to $2,110,574.41. The tax remains, the tax rate remains at $16.90 per thousand. Uh, and we also attached to that memo the revised model as well as the revised LA-5. Ms. Wright, do you have a question? A, a question for Mr. Kamalo, because I'm admittedly new to this whole process and I, I don't know a whole lot about taxation. I'm trying to learn. Um, but, you know, I, I understood that there were these varying classifications, commercial, residential, open space discounts, or single versus dual. And, um, you know, by and large, the, these, these um, categories don't really seem to apply to Hoffington and the kind of a community we are. Um, and the issue of single versus dual, we've long agreed that it was not in the interest of our encouraging business to do a dual tax rate, and as we've learned from Mr. Uh, Nice's displays, there's a huge uh, impact of raising, you know, give one discount, there's about a five-fold increase on the other end. So I was led to believe that these were the categories or discounts that were available to us. Recently, um, Mr. Kamal, you have uh, made us aware of a situation where there is a manufacturing concern that uh, manufacturers do not have a property tax. Is that could you explain that to us? Because I was under the impression that the businesses paid property taxes like everyone else, and there I don't understand what these exemptions are for manufacturing. Yeah, through the chair. Um, and with your permission, John may also jump in to provide the details. But basically, I think the issue we are referring to is not in relation to property tax. It is in relation to personal tax. And these new yeah. classifications adjusted that accordingly, correct? The, the memo that came in today acknowledges the two companies that were That's then retro re retroactively um, assigned the manufacturer status. And Again, with the Chair's permission, John can elaborate on the topic. I can. That, that's really what it is. But um, we're not talking about a manufacturing corporation in Hopkinton that owns real estate. They would pay a real estate tax. We are talking about personal property tax. And under the statute, a manufacturing corporation that is granted a capital M designation by the Commonwealth uh, does not pay personal property taxes. So because those assets are being resold? I'm sorry? The assets are being used for the resale of the product? That's correct. 
and, and I don't know enough about tax law, or I believe they're still paying some type of corporate tax, but they're not paying personal property tax on that equipment the way another company would without that M designation. Okay, so what we're discussing tonight, which is pr property tax, that would not change. They are charged a property tax, as are other businesses. Well, if they own real estate. I mean, you could have a company in town that leases property and you know, would or would or would not be paying personal property tax and no real estate tax. Sure, but that property tax would be paid by the, that's, by the owner. That's it, correct. So it would be paid to the county. That's board. correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Mr. Hart. So the, the excess levy then went from 2 million 210 roughly to 2 million 110 because that personal property revenue fell out of there and didn't hit the residential taxpayer or any property taxpayer, correct? It was, so it's just an excess levy issue and not a tax rate issue. That's correct. Right. Um, and so these two classifications, I, I, I remember we talked about one classification or one company looking for a class M, but there was another class M as well? Y yes. Um, I forget the name of the company. John, please rescue me. There were two, CTS Valpy Corporation on South Street and Hutchinson Aerospace and Industry on South Street. And we had a little timing question about the certification of them with DOI, DOR, correct? Well, it was DOR told us that there was a clerical error and that they should have carried the M designation, and yet they weren't listed in the corporation book with the M designation. So these two taxpayers in Hockington are happy today? Yes, they are. Yes. Good. Thank you. Mr. Sestari, anything? Um, no, so that change in the excess levy um, when we net out when we net out the underwrite that was approved last year, uh, second underwrite that we passed in the last four years, right? Uh, only ones in Massachusetts, right? I believe within that time span, I believe so. So first and second and only. Uh, That's net of that, isn't it? So yeah. it'll be the one point five. Um, coming off the 2.1. I think it's already off. It's already off. So where do we sit right now with excess levy capacity? Um, this this is the LA-5, which you will sign later, but the excess levy is $2,110,574.41. Okay. Is that, that's where we stand. So we were going down under two million. We were going down like a million six or something. But then we have another four or five hundred k coming in because it's a new tax year. So that's I think why it's mm -hmm. back up there. So we'll have to discuss another one for this year. It's up over two million. Um, okay. Wow. Excellent. So. Um, Mr. Kamal, do you have anything else to add before I request a motion? Nothing to it at this point. Can we see the list on that TV over there of the questions? Well, I can uh, I can request a motion to grant an open space exemption. S sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. Perhaps the first motion should be to close the public hearing. Oh, okay. Chair requests a motion to close the public hearing. So yeah. move. Uh, hold. Have we ever gone to the public specific to this issue? Actually, we did. We had some yeah. folks come up, but we didn't close the public hearing. So I would encourage us to see if anybody else is here tonight specific to this issue. Okay. I'm not convinced there are any, but I think just. All right. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to come up and discuss the our tax issues? Seeing none. Chair will now request a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Pass it. Okay. Now, uh, um, want to deliberate any of this before we go into some motions? We, so we, we hit a lot of it two weeks ago. Just in case anybody has some. Other questions for Mr. Kamalo? Can I just make a comment? Yeah. Um, so we're going from 1680 per thousand for FY17 to 1690 per thousand for FY18. That's correct. As of this is what we're going to vote tonight. 
So that would suggest that our taxes went up 10 cents per thousand. So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe the message out there is, okay, taxes aren't going up a whole lot. It's only 10 cents per thousand. But the number of thousands for every property went up. Right, so the average property value in Hopkinton increased year over year. I think that's in around the five or six percent range. So I guess, you know, it's great that our tax rate is at 1690 instead of 1680 last year, but our taxes are going up because your property values are going up and they're going up primarily because we're buying a lot of assets right now. Is that a fair statement, John? Uh, <clears throat> it is. Um, I don't know the percentage, but uh, the letter that's included in the PowerPoint, if you want me to back up, show the average single family at 548,000 and something last year and 571,000 this year. So because of the value difference and because of the 10 cent increase in the tax rate, that's about a $450 increase on that average house, okay. which is about a four and a half or five percent increase. In yeah, percent. that makes sense, that makes sense. The, uh, the other point to make too is even though that number is going up you know, by a small amount, you know, let's let's not think that we can even try to rest on our laurels because uh, the truth of the matter is we have we have uh, our our uh, new revenue coming in that is surpassing anything we expected, and in the coming years, you know, if that stabilizes or goes away altogether, we're going to still have this big number for our operating expenses that's churning away and all of a sudden that's going to hit hit this number at some point and instead of going up 10 cents it'll be going up a dollar and 10 cents excellent point okay good thank you but to have everybody's property values goes up means we're doing something well in this town people want to be here it's a great place to live good schools great schools New DPW facility, great library, just opened up and it's beautiful. And one of the safest towns in the country. Safest towns in the country, absolutely. Yes. Okay, with that, uh, the chair requests a motion to grant an open space exemption. Hearing none. Are you recording this in the minutes? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. The chair will now request a motion to grant a residential exemption. Okay. Not going to grant that one. We request a motion to grant a small commercial exemption. Okay. The chair now requests a motion to approve a single tax rate for FY18. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? There are none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. You oppose and you abstentions. Okay. okay. The chair now requests a motion to approve and sign the LA5 form for the Department of Revenue. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Is that motion in order, Mr. Kamal? Yes, it is. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed and abstentions. Okay, so we'll sign that afterwards. Thank you, John. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Thanks, John. You will sign this tonight because it does have to go into the Department of Revenue with your signatures in order to approve the tax rate. Is that the LA5 there? Yeah. Or can we just sign it over? Let's just do it right now. Pass it around. You will sign it. Where am I signing? Everybody have a pen? Okay. Let's figure out which sign. We have a stack to sign tonight. We have a stack to sign tonight. Anybody? Let's keep moving. This, this gets signed online in the gateway system, but the Bureau of Accounts requires me to fax them a page with their original signatures. So, anyway, down there.
Okay. Oh my. Uh, so much for behavior. <laughs> okay. It's the Paul oh, Woodrow still over behind Dr. Pat. 2018 Boston Marathon Invitational's random distribution. The board will hold the public random distribution of the marathon invitational entries to qualified applicants for the 2018 Boston Marathon. Mr. Kamalo, would you start us off, please? Yes, um, through the chair, I am pleased to report that uh, one more time we have a very robust response from the community with regards to the invitation by the board uh, for local organizations to apply for invitational entries. In summary, we received requests from five town departments, 25 civic organizations from Hopkinton who undertake activities to support the community. And we also received two applications from organizations that undertake public service within the Commonwealth. However, it needs to be said that when the board sent out the notice inviting organizations uh, to apply for the entries, the board was very clear that it was only seeking applications from local organizations. Uh, we felt that as a, as, 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 as a courtesy, we should advise the board and the public that yes, we did receive two applications that came from uh, entities that did not meet the uh, specifications sent out by the board. And so, we're looking at five departments in town that have applied, and also 25 civic organizations that have applied. Thanks to the generosity and willingness uh, by the town departments to make the system work, uh, the numbers seem to line up neatly. The town departments are applying and requesting 25 invitational entries, and then we have 20, 25 invitational entries to be distributed based on what the board decides to 25 organizations in town. So there's a total of 50 bibs? Is that what you're saying? 25. Yeah, we got 50. 50. Yes. Thank you. I see 29 on this sheet, Mr. Kamal, for the yeah. town departments. I, I think, the, yes, there's a, there's a correction. Uh, the police department is going to request 12, and the fire chief, the fire department is going to request 2. Fire department. Do we have, Mr. Chair, sorry if we mm -hmm. get in this a little bit. Do we have the numbers from last year, the, the allotments for last year? Uh, yes. It's in our folder. Yes, we included it in the packet, but basically the town uh, allocations were 29, and 21 went to private entities in town. So 29 to town, the same five departments last year. We've got 29, this year it's 25. Yeah. And then we did the other stuff. Correct. Mr. Chair, I would suggest we take this in steps um, in order to keep it somewhat straight. This can get a little confusing. I would suggest that the chair um, immediately take the two out-of-town agencies, I'm sure great organizations, out of the mix, which is the last page we received. Yep, I like that idea. Yep. The two, um, the one from Framingham and the one from yeah, Weston. Weston and Framingham. I'm sure great organizations, but it does get very tight. And then I would make a motion to approve the first 25 to the town departments, which are down year over year. Um, in the distribution, Mr. Kamala, year over year, with the adjustments to 12 and 2 for police and fire, that seems to be in line. Yes. Um, again, for for the 
the sake of the public and also those who are watching at home, uh, the town departments at the Hopkinton Senior Center requesting four, the Hopkinton Police Department requesting 12, the Hopkinton Marathon Committee requesting its traditional five, the Hopkinton Public Lib Library requesting two, and then the Hopkinton Fire Department requesting two. So, Mr. Chair, with the understanding that the, Hop the Hopkinton uh, departments use these numbers not for personal gain, but to help them do their job on Marathon Day, and the numbers are a way in order to recruit officers to come, recruit fire folks to come, recruit people to help them get this thing organized and done, I would move that uh, the Board of Selectmen approve the 25 distribution or the number of 25 numbers for distribution to those departments as submitted this evening. Second. Mr. Kamala, do we have in our packet, do we have um, the average last year, all well, the requests, the average, and what each, yeah, it's each a, agency uh, actually got? It's it, yeah, it's, uh, it's, the, it's, it's in the packet just, just below uh, um, the discussion of... Uh, okay, amounts raised. Yes. Yeah. There's some, some phenomenal organizations. Yeah. Simplify thirteen thousand five hundred ninety-three. And what was the goal last year, Mr. Kamala? I remember it was four thousand five hundred or five thousand. I think it was four thousand five hundred. Yeah. Library Foundation ten thousand. Wow, this is just, it's, it's great. Live for Evan, 12,000 for one So, Mr. Chair, the reason for my motion on the 25 for town departments is it's uh, somewhat straightforward. Mm -hmm. Just trying to chip away at this, and then we sure. look at those other 25 organizations and kind of go through those and sort of how they did it and there's any new ones, etc. So do we have any further discussion on the uh, on the motion? There's a second. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion on the on the 25 for the town organizations? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Passes unanimously. Okay, so the next 25. You know, uh, we can you know, we can just make it simple and give everybody one, but I, I, I don't know whether uh, you know, it's that, that's the, the fair way, you know, I, there, there's, we, we all have our favorite ones, but it's, you know, who do we say no to? So we have requests for, we have 25 numbers to give, and we have requests for... 94. Yeah, 65, isn't it? Oh, for the 65. Yes, 65 from 25 organizations. Yeah. Are there any, none of these organizations are new, they've all gotten these numbers in the past? Um, I think the new, num the new organization is almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the bottom, Friends of Hopkins Spear, I think. Uh, I, I looked through this, there are a number of new ones. There's the yeah. High School Technology yeah. Robotics Club, yeah. the Middle School Sky's the Limit Courtyard, Desire to Inspire, the Hopkinton Lions, and the Hopkinton Historical, and I don't know quite where Sharon Timlin fits in um, as as Hopkinton organization or not. I should mention, sorry, uh, Mrs. Wright, I believe the sky is the limit courtyard. Um, is there a repeat flyer? That's, that's in the middle. Yeah, of the, I think there's been funded the before. School. I know what it is, but what, what, what are you saying? It's not... It has been funded before, I believe. Oh, I didn't see it in last year's list, but I'll take you word for it. the year before. What's the, what's the charge behind it? Which one's that? This guy's the limit courtyard. It's the Shane um, DeRoche's in memory of courtyard in the middle school uh, so, atrium. So what's the money go to though? Is, is it to pay for it? Is it to maintain it? Is it the programs that go on in it? Or? I think it's a continuation of the programs and the, the facility itself, but I, I'm, I'm guessing here a little bit. Yeah, I, I believe the first funding was towards uh, the, the part of the construction of right. the facility. Yes. So this is the courtyard that's in the middle of the middle school? Yeah. Yes. 
really nice. Okay. The senior elder tea was held there this year, right outside. I'm talking about 22 here. You were, were you an elder tea person? I was not honored at the elder tea. No, oh, just thank you. Just checking. Yeah. Just checking. I, I, again, as the, as the board is thinking through this, and third <laughs> violation of the be nice tonight thing. Yeah. <laughs> No, I just I thought you should have been hired. <laughs> yeah. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, through, through the chair. As, as the board is formulating its thoughts and its questions, it may be helpful for the public at home to know who has applied. Um, with your permission, Mr. Chair? Absolutely. The Hopkinton <clears throat> Tax Relief Fund, the Hopkinton Public Library Friends, the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. Can we get a distinction between the two of those, please, for the public? Here. Other back, I mean, Hopkins Public Library Director through the chair. Um, our friends group um, funds library materials, programs, and some extraneous expenses that we do not have other sources of funding for. The foundation was um, initially founded to support the library construction project. They are now reworking their mission statement to focus on larger, broader um, funding needs that are beyond the scope of the Friends, but also that the town does not um, cover. How about, uh, where does the, the money go to for this EHOP one? Yeah, I'm coming to that. EHOP, formerly Educate Hopkinton, and then this Hopkinton Education Foundation, Hopkinton Parent Teacher Association, the Hopkinton High School class of 2018. Should, should, we, yes. should we ask the questions along the way or save them up? So I think yeah. Mr. Ted Stone exactly. is asking yeah. about yeah. EHOP. Yeah. Is there anyone here from EHOP? EHOP? Charges there. Okay. That makes it easy. I can't vote on something. I don't know what they, what they support. So, so EHOP is a is a nonprofit entity, obviously in town, that spends a lot of time educating the community on the various issues before town, uh, various issues not only on the town side but, but within, within town hall, but also within the schools, and uh, very active in town. They organize the carnival and I think other things. If I said something wrong, let me know. But uh, very active in the community in terms of. You know, getting the word out about all that we do and all the school committee does, and everybody else in town that helps out. EHOP did the uh, organize the carnival. That wasn't the Graziano. Was I think PTA. that is EHOP. It was PTA. Yeah, the PTA. Yes. PTA. Was the PTA. Okay. PTA. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And, and Ms. Shea, if I may, uh, through my own experience working with EHOP, uh, they have been instrumental in educating the public on issues coming before town meeting. Mm -hmm. They also, unlike town departments, have the ability uh, to organize forums uh, that um, uh, are viewed as all-inclusive without necessarily focusing on advocacy. EHOP did the, uh, was it EHOP that did the seminar the other night on the fields? Yes, yeah. yes. So that's the type of activities that they would do online, but also they'd pull people together. Okay. And they did the traffic calming last year. Yeah. 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 They okay. do the, the uh, selectmen or the town debates too, right? So, Mr. Chair, perhaps maybe the way to do this, I know Mr. Kamal's working through the list, but I think there's a lot of questions along the way too. Maybe we just go right down the list. Any questions on the first? And I can just take it okay. off that way. Okay. Hopkins Tax Relief Fund. Any questions? Yeah, so I have a question on that one. Okay. Mr. Palmer, I believe, is here. Yes. Uh, Mr. Palmer, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so on the tax relief fund, a, a number if a number is issued and someone goes out and raises the funds, where do those funds go? Directly to um, their um, grants to um, elderly taxpayers that have need, and the money goes from the tax relief fund right to their tax bill. It doesn't go to them, it's a credit on their tax bill. So that 5,000, well we got five, we had had the number for two years. Uh, last year's number, we, we had $5,000 uh, raised and that went $500 each to 10 needy people. 
Thank you, Sauce. That's direct. There's no expenses that come off that. No further yes. questions. And it's, uh, this, this is, a, I think it's a town agency, a town yeah. Well, that's why I was asking the it's question. A it seems it's a little a bit fund. blurry here, which yeah. what this yeah. is. This is not a charity. Because no. there's yeah. another fund that we also support through town endeavors to fund that as well, right? No. Uh, there is a check off on your tax yes. bill yes. that you can check off and say you'd like to yes. add ten ten dollars to go into the tax relief fund. That used to be a principal source of revenue. It's no longer because of uh, most tax bills are paid online, and that just it brings in very it. very small amount. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hopton Public Library Friends. We just we just talked about that one, right? Mm -hmm. Hopton Public Library Foundation. Any questions? Okay, so last year those two were bundled together. Mm -hmm. In the in how much they they raised. Last year they had four bibs, one for each, and two yes, for a bundle. So they had four. Plus another yeah. one for the friends. They had. The situation through the chairs. The situation with the runners is um, a little bit complex. The library asks for two runners every year, which we then redistribute as well, one to the friends, one to the foundation, so that each organization actually ends up with two runners. So what you're seeing bundled is probably the runners that were allocated to the library last year, which we um, allowed the friends and the foundation to handle the management of, and then they each got a separate runner for each organization independently. So it was four bibs for the library at the end of the day? Yes. And this year you're asking for five bibs? Um, generally. If the, no, if the foundation asks for two? If the foundation asks for two, then yes. Um, it, two two well, directly yeah, to the no, department they're getting, they're and then... two that is, we already voted on. Is, yeah. is, that, is that... We've got the two that we already voted on and then how many bibs on top of the two that we just voted on? Seven. Seven more. Seven more? That they're requesting. For a total of nine? The requests. No, they're, re they're requesting. For a total of nine? Yes. Is that right? Uh, I'm actually no. not familiar with what the Friends of the Foundation requested, but... Maybe friends are requesting two. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Foundation's <laughs> requesting five. The Foundation. Oh, so it's seven. Happy. Oh, no. Uh, that's plus the... Plus two. the two so that we've already It's coming out to nine. On. Yeah. Okay. To have one, the foundation would be happy to have one library uh, foundation bib mm -hmm. uh, if the board of staff would be uh, willing to do that. I'm not. I cannot speak for the friends. I don't know what the friends requested uh, from the board of staff. So, so the two that were already voted on for the library mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as part of the town departments, mm -hmm. those will be likely distributed one to friends, one to foundation. Correct. Yeah. So friends and foundation will each already, they've got one each already in their pockets. And now there's this request. Which is how it went last year as well. Yeah. There's seven more. Yeah. Last year the foundation had, had the two numbers uh, that the Board of Selectmen issued and raised uh, over $10,000 with those numbers. Yeah, no, I think that the numbers are great. Um, no question about that. I'm just trying to make sure that it's clear. Yeah, and there's several other organizations that will come get one here and then may have already worked with the fire department to help them do something and get one there. So yep. there's mm -hmm. some of that that does go on. Sure. Yeah. 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 And more power to them. <laughs> um, so we're on EHOP next. We did EHOP. We did EHOP. EHOP's done. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, F. HEF. We, we heard from HEF earlier. Anybody have any questions about HEF? No. Okay, the uh, HPTA. No. Okay, no, no questions. Um, class of 2018. Any 18s? Was 18 here last year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Class of 2019, we already heard from. Sky's the Limit Courtyard. See, that one, if anybody could give me more explanation on that, I'd appreciate it. I think Mrs. Birchman might be able to handle that. 
Thanks for coming. Mr. Sure. Chair, if I could make a quick comment. Yes. Folks, while we're asking all these questions, we're not trying to, to we're not trying to pick on anybody. We're just trying to understand it all. There's a lot of fundraising importance here, so just bear with us while we go through this, please. Uh, so yeah, I actually I spoke to Mr. Keller about this yesterday. They their project is 99% complete. There's still some finished work in terms of sound equipment and lighting and, and that kind of thing. So this is just to get them over the end um, of the project fundraising. Okay. So, so it's not maintenance. This is to yeah, finish just the project for the project. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then so then next year we wouldn't really expect. Well, to I wouldn't be able to speak to that. I didn't ask him <laughs> about that, but that's specifically what he said the money would be for for this year. What's the, I guess, what that space, what's it being used for so other than Elder T? It's a, it, it is used for the Elder T. Um, they have a lot of science classes out there. Um, it's the classes. The kids, sometimes class will just take place out there, but a lot of science work happens out there. A lot of school-wide events, um, social events for the kids and, and that kind of thing. So. I wasn't actually expecting to talk about this today, so I could get you more detail later, but that won't help you about the richness of what they do out there, but I know it's used um, quite a bit. And this is all being just, the whole little area is being funded voluntarily it through things like this? It was all privately raised. So it's nothing, the school budget doesn't do anything for that we, area? We, oh gosh, I'm quite certain we paid nothing. Okay. Um, for any of that. I don't believe there was any budget impact at all. And it all stemmed following Shane's. That was the impetus. Yeah. Um, so his mother gave a substantial portion of um, what was raised on their behalf, and that was sort of the, um, the seed money, and it is dedicated to him. You'll see in the bricks a lot of um, sentiment around that. I just learned about how they've got the dirt in there if you want to hear about that, but that's a, probably a story for another day. Yeah. If learn that over coffee. Yeah. yeah. It was hard to if maintain made, the courtyard because yeah. of the shadows and everything. Yeah. So this is now it's all cleaned up. It's really yeah. very nice. It's, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, if I may, um, when completed, the courtyard will include several outdoor classrooms, yeah. including one designed for science experiments, a reading and study area, picnic benches for outdoor lunches, a frog pond, and a stage, and a movie theater for movies, dances, plays, and presentations. The courtyard will also be eco-friendly as it will include composting bins and solar panel lamp posts for both Grady, who was the inspiration behind this, and the students, the benefits of this outdoor outlet are endless. The sky is the limit. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, desire to inspire. Uh, Hopton High School Tech and Engineering Robotics Student Clubs. Oh, it's all oh, come on up, sure. I believe we put it in, if I'm not mistaken, for two, two bids with uh, technology and engineering, and then we had a couple student groups underneath that. I believe the application was right. Yeah. Um, it's Business Professionals in America and Robotics Club, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of student groups. Um, so I have with me some students from the business professionals group, and then we just had one of our robotics people leave because <laughs> he had to go home. Um, Mr. Kamalo was actually nice enough last year to interview uh, Phoebe Lynn as a student for the BPA club. But I'll let the kids talk in a sec about what's involved, but it's basically to cover uh, very expensive registration fees, hardware and equipment that the students utilize. Uh, currently, we have 24 students in the business professional group, as well as 43 students in robotics. So it serves quite a bit of students in the, in the town community. So the kids can talk a little bit about what we do. Yeah, so just to talk about, again, a little bit what we do. <coughs> but um, so as a club, we kind of, like you said, there's 24 of us, but we participate in uh, business-related competitions like business, IT, communications, and that kind of thing. And so <clears throat> how it works is we start off at a state level where we go to a competition, actually um, pretty local in Framingham. And so we all have our individual events that we do, but also team events, like um, team members with them. And so that's what we do. And if the top the top placing teams, if we um, meet that, we actually advance on to the national level, which the location for that changes each year. But this year, just for example, it's in Dallas. So I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to add. But. That just provides students with the opportunity to compete in business events while still in high school and paying exposure to 
the business world. And uh, on the flip side of it, the robotics group, um, you can come this weekend if you want. We have uh, 36 teams at the high school having an event. Um, but we have currently eight teams at the high school, boys and girls. Uh, they compete in four regional events. They, we have one team that's already qualified, the Southern New Englands. And then as they do better and better, the expenses go up and up. And uh, we're constantly searching for new revenue to try and support the kids. So that's just a little bit of what we do. Excellent. It's one of those competitions where the robots try to crush each other or something a little more. <laughs> these, are, these are friendly robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're on MTV with that show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They help people cross the street. I heard those robots are going to take our jobs. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're all hearing. <laughs> I don't know. I read on Hop News all the time that these folks do extremely well when they travel to all these different competitions. So. I'll bet the robots could take our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Some, some would suggest some of us are. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Okay, um, Keep Smiling for Abbey Foundation. The board has received updates on the wonderful accomplishments oh of this foundation yes. over the past years. And Yes. Uh, they uh, keep smiling that, but they, that was uh, 15, 16, almost 17,000 mm dollars -hmm. of that tune up as last year. Um, Live for Evan, we just heard from them. Friends of Hopkinton, Project Just Because, the Respite Center, Bay Path Humane Society, Semper Fi, Hopkinton Women's Club. Um, I just have one question. Uh, why is Semper Fi in the in-town list rather than on the out-of-town list? That's a good question. Good catch. Okay. My understanding is through, again, the reports that have been provided to the town, uh, the active group members who have come before the board uh, have described projects that are Hopkinton specific and mm -hmm. those individuals live here in town. The Runners Club is very yeah. active with this group. Yeah. Remember Michelle came last yeah. year? And I do, and, and I, know that, I know that they've used the numbers incredibly effectively, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to find out why we're making a distinction on a couple of them. And this organization isn't based in Hopkinton, but it was in the rest of the list with Hopkinton. It probably would be better on their application if it was a joint Semperfy and the Hopkinton Running Club. Because yeah. yeah. that's what it really is. Yeah. Hopkinton Women's Club, Hopkinton Music Association, 15th Annual Sharon Timlin Memorial 5K Race, Interstage Left, Hopkins Center for the Arts, the Hopkinton Lions Club, and the Hopkinton Historical Society. And the, uh, the goal that we've set for numbers this year is, Mr. Kamala, did we stick at 4,500 or? Yeah, the, the number I threw out to the board last time we discussed the procedure for this year was anything between 4,500 and 5,000. Mm -hmm. Well, just counting up these organizations, um, without the library, because we've got to figure out, I know they've got some and maybe we'll give them more. I think I was getting about 23, giving everybody one. How many are in here? 25. Are there 25? No, we've got, we've got 25 to work 25 with. And I, I was getting, I was getting yeah. 23 just giving all of these one. Uh, Did you see? Yeah. So I counted on this spreadsheet, I counted 25. Yeah. yeah. And there's some on the other page, too, yeah. behind you. Yeah. I, I have not excluded any organization other than the two nine town entities. Right, right. And 25. Where are you yeah. coming up? Where are you 23. Yeah. I'm saying counting these or excluding the library right now. Oh, okay. They've already got, they've already got two. Right, we can figure it. out whatever. It. But with everything else and taking out the couple of non-Hopkinton, I'm getting a total yes, okay, of 23 be. to give them all one. Mm -hmm. That's only leaving two. So, I mean, I think at the very start, everyone should get one. <laughs> These are 
town organizations and then just divvy up the remaining two. Uh, it's, it's great. We've had such a great uh, a great response, and uh, I'd, I'd love to give five out to an organization, but I, I just don't see it happening this year. Well, we just don't have if, it. If, didn't have if, it. if I may. Yes. Um, the marathon policy basically says the board will take a two-step process to giving out the invitational entries. Step number one is setting out the procedure for the process. And whilst I understand that the two library entities, the Library Foundation and the Friends of the Library, <coughs> do receive numbers directly from the library department, it might have been helpful at the time the board set up the procedure that we would alert entities that should they be receiving numbers um, from other town entities, that that might be some consideration that the board will uh, take into consideration in, or will be a factor that the board will take into consideration in how it distributes the numbers. Mm -hmm. So my point is, perhaps we should have raised this earlier rather than tonight. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that, uh, you know, we can have all the discussion we want, but I think we know where this is gonna end up. Yeah. So, you know, we have, we have 25 groups and we have 25 bibs. Um, as far as we know, all these groups are meeting its qualifications that we've requested uh, for, for organizations to qualify. Um, you know, to, to Mr. Kamala's point, you know, now is not the time to make up new rules or change rules. Um, you know, it's the time to execute. And in the coming year, you know, or next year, uh, if, if the board wants to change things, and say that you know needs to be organizations that focus on X, Y, or Z, and haven't gotten numbers for bibs from anybody else. Well, we can do that next year. But this year we have 25 bibs and 25 qualified applicants. Uh, so I think we know where this is headed. So, so, so you're inclined to ask for us to. My inclination is one. just to say, yeah, let's give each one one bib. You know, certainly when I look at these, you know, in, in my own judgment, there are some that I'd like to give more than one and others that I, I you know, think would be okay to exclude. But I'm not going to make that judgment tonight because everybody falls within the qualifications and, and we already set the rules out. Yeah, and and, we, we and they are all contributing to the community in some way and that's what we want. Uh, so to say that, you know, one type of contribution right. is more important than another, um, you know, I, I don't feel like yeah. making that, that qualification. That no, makes sense. It's a, I mean, Mr. Hur's, you know, pension to want to give to one versus if I didn't like it and you wanted to give to another and John didn't like it. And so uh, I like your idea of, of uh, just kind of streamlining it and then maybe revising our policy for next year. Well, if I, if I may, my numbers are coming out a little differently. I'm, <laughs> I'm with the exception, taking out the library, because yeah, we know we have, get it. There'll be they 23. Yes. There are 23, and we have 25. So Bibs. there are two extra to give to somebody. If my not necessarily. So how many did the library have last year in total? Forget where they got them. How many runners ran for the library, foundation, or friends? One, two, three, four, six. Okay, so they would be down this year by two if we go forward and stick with the 25 and the 25 we already did, right? So they're already down two year over year. Well, we also, I mean, Live oh, for Evan and, and uh, the Keep Smiling for Abby, they had multiple numbers last year too, right? Right, that's why I want to get to that in a minute, but we're just trying to handle this library right. thing first. See what I'm saying, Mrs. Wright? No, there were a number of organizations that had multiple bibs. And if we give everyone one, there's going to be, you know, they're, they're all going to have to take fewer. Yeah, uh, you know, but we never, we never say that having, having a bib the prior year gives you a higher priority this year. Uh, you know, and the, and the fact is this year we've got some new applicants. Um, you know, I think it's fantastic that we have, uh, you know, groups from the high school coming here trying to find creative ways to fund whether it's robotics or, you know, their, their class gifts and, and, you know, things like that. Um, you know, we have some 
you know, fantastic, fantastic organizations that uh, started in town and have grown, and they're, you know, contributing in a number of ways, you know, and, and we've heard from a couple of them over the last month. Um, keep smiling and, and live for Evan. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you can top organizations like that when it comes to uh, being, you know, quote unquote worthy, uh, you know, of something like this. Um, but as I said before, there there are all different ways to contribute to a community, and that's what makes it a community. Uh, you know, if we were if we were just going to fund one type of thing, um, then then it starts getting lopsided. So. As much as I would love to be able to, you know, make some choices here and there and say, well, you know, I think that these guys can wait and these guys are going to get more than one. I don't think it's the thing to do tonight. What I would like to impress upon people, though, is that uh, each year when we set this target of $4,500 or $5,000, you know, that started out as a lot lower number. And, you know, we've, we've seen the ability of organizations to raise more. Um, in addition to looking at the overall landscape uh, during the marathon and what other uh, charitable organizations require people to raise if they're going to get a bib. And we do want to see that number uh, hit for, for each of these bibs. Um, I believe that in the write-up, uh, or at least I know in, in discussion in the past, you know, we've said that we were, you know, we're maintaining the records and you know we reserve the right from one year to the next if we're saying 4500 and you raise 500 or you don't find a runner at all then well you know next year you might not get a number just because you know we want to see the bid go where it's going to be most effective so we encourage people to try to really raise as much as you can but you're all trying that already i'm sure so. i don't know but i know after okay mr kamala of the entrance that we Gave numbers to last year. Did all meet their goal of uh, financial? Um, most did, um, and in fact, what it came down to is that the average number raised, based on the numbers given out and the, the the revenue generated, we exceeded that target. Yeah, I don't care about the, what the average is. <laughs> yeah. I care about if if uh, if I decided to run for the Norman Kamalo brand new Lexus fund and I didn't get anything, and I came back this year and said I'm going to do it for the Elaine Lazarus Bentley fund, um, you know, you've already proven that you didn't, you weren't able to meet your goal the year before. So, in my eyes, it would take a backseat to someone who did um, meet or exceed the goal. Yeah. That's an important point of discussion. In fact, you will recall, at the time the board decided to embark on this invitational entry program, one of the key considerations was what we, as the town, will do to, to build the local organization's capacity to fund development, to fund raise. And so over the years, we've been trying to establish networks and relationships that help the, in the different organizations in town to get to that target. All organizations are not equal. There are other organizations that do well in fundraising. There are also other organizations that don't do that well. But by the end of the day, this is a wonderful program in town. The entities that we've identified, the entities that have been part of this program over the last three, four years, have done a fabulous job. Uh, and I'm excited that Every time we come to uh, the, the board's meeting to discuss this topic, that there are new themes that come up, there are wonderful stories that we hear from the entities that push this out. Directly in answer to your question, not all organizations are equal. Some raise, do fundraising very well. However, the town accepted from the get-go that we will need to invest our own effort in helping these organizations build their <coughs> fundraising capacities. So, spoken like a true politician. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, I guess it's not, this isn't the, the forum to discuss uh, criteria to give this, I mean. That was the last meeting. We discussed the criteria. Okay. And, but we can. To put that on my agenda for next year, because absolutely. I'm glad it's, uh, you know, that, that makes everyone warm and fuzzy, but it should be competitive. 
And if you don't meet your goal, then you should probably be exempt from next year. Like, say the, you know, the Norman Kamala Lexus Fund didn't make it, but say the Keep Smiling for Abby got six numbers and they raised $50 million for each one. If they come back and they want a seventh number next year, I'm more inclined to give them a seventh number than the, uh, the charity that doesn't uh, fulfill their obligation of, of meeting the bare minimum. I, I don't know that I agree with that, Mr. Tedstone, because there's some organizations, they're larger organizations, they have a broader fundraising base. Um, and for some of the smaller organizations that have one number, mm -hmm. the amount of money they raise really makes a big difference if you're small. Yep. Um, there, there is more represented than just the dollars in what some of this fundraising does to a smaller organization. Um, so, you know, I, I just think that some of the bigger, well-known that can pull in some donors that can have no trouble finding funding because they're running in the name of that are on a different <laughs> platform sometimes than a smaller local organization. And um, I think at the end of the day, uh, part of our mission in this is is to do the most good mm -hmm. throughout our community and so, um, you know spread it around. A counterpoint to that is, I think all these are local. I don't think I'm not looking at Dana Farber or no. or any of these. They're all local, and <clears throat> I guess the the fact that I threw out that large number was was misleading. If if the requirement to get these numbers are to raise $4,500 and we give a number out and that charity raises $2,100. It's not really meeting its obligation and maybe there are different ways for them to raise $2,100 where it's not going to inhibit another charity local to help local roots raise the, the minimum. But I think we can go on. We're not going to set policy no. today. So no. we'll um, discuss that later. Next year. Okay. So, so, so this is a, you know, it's it's not, it's not easy. It's kind of like leading into town meeting when we get lots of capital requests and they all make sense, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to say no. I don't know how we say no to any of these organizations uh, because they're all doing great things in Hopkinton. Uh, what what we have to remember is I don't know five six years ago this was a free for all. There was no structure to it. There were 50, 75, maybe 100 numbers coming at us, uh, all for good reasons and with good intentions with the BAA, a great partner in Hopkinton and, and in Boston. Um, but there was some stuff that happened because it was a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. And so at least now, while it's difficult to make the decision, we are on top of it and we know exactly where we're going and, and where the numbers are going. And I think that's a great benefit to the community, that it's all very transparent. I'd also like to thank um, uh, the town organizations, police chief and fire chief in particular, who uh, who are willing to give up a couple of numbers. You know, those yeah. they the numbers come through our board, as we know, and and you know we're the board that accepts gifts for the town. But um, there's a long-standing history where they've been they've been getting the numbers directly, and they were used to having a certain number of bibs, and you know that helped facilitate smooth operations uh, on race day and, and things of that nature it wasn't it wasn't necessarily something that was you know just going for the for the department and the officers in the department um, so uh, you know just it's just another example I guess of uh, to mr. Kamala's point you know the, the different entities within the town organization working together to help make the community a little bit more fulfilled so and also thank you to the BAA for giving us so many numbers yeah next year we should do this right before we issue the parade permit though yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that well I, 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 yeah, I, and, yeah I should have looked at the agenda a little bit closer uh, mr. chair I'll move that the, the Board of Selectmen approved the issuance of one marathon number to the 25 applicants that came before us this evening in this document 23 there's, there's a difference of two there no that's because he's including the two I'm including the, the those two, two in my motion You're giving, uh, okay so these 23 plus two for the library to bring it to 25 that's correct mm -hmm. 
Well, the 23 plus the one for the Hopkins Public Library Friends, Inc., and the Hopkins Public Library Foundation. Right. In addition to the two that were right. given through as town organizations. Yes. So I'll restate the motion. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the 25 numbers, uh, issue a number to each of the 25 organizations that came before us this evening in this particular sheet. Uh, that's it. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any nays? No. Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. And again, thank you. Thank, you for, thank you for putting in. Sorry we couldn't give more out. We'll do our best to negotiate better ones next year if possible. And you're all welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. It's very, very riveting. <laughs> We're doing licensing next. <laughs> Where's everybody coming? <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Now to clear a room. Yeah. Wow. Because now all we have is license renewals. <laughs> yes, no more free freebies. Annual license renewals. The, the Board of Select will consider renewing or approving active business licenses in the town of Hopkinton, including all alcohol, common victual, class one and class two uh, livery, limousine licenses, entertainment, and municipal street license for the calendar year 2018. Mr. Kamalo, you love this one. You do a great job this year. Yeah, in, 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 in fact, I think credit goes to Maria Glenn in the office. Uh, she is the one who uh, handles this project from beginning to end, uh, contacting each and every business owner in town, uh, sending the required application forms, walking them through the uh, town policies and regulations, and after receiving the applications, she then sends them out to the permitting departments for their review. Uh, and I can share with you that our permitting departments take this process seriously. Um, this includes the fire department, the building department, the police department, uh, the finance and treasury office as well, because they are the ones who give us the information on whether there are any outstanding bills uh, to the town. I uh, am happy to say that for the most part, the list that has been presented to, to the board um, indicates that the majority of the businesses have complied with the requirements. Uh, there are a few businesses where there are still some issues to resolve. Uh, I, I believe subsequent, in fact, to sending out the sending out the board meeting packet last Friday, some of the entities that still had some requirements to meet have come forth and resolved some of those issues. Uh, what we did this year was, in fact, to present the information to you in a much more compact way where we grouped each license type and then under each license type indicated which businesses met the requirements satisfactorily and which uh, businesses still had some issues to resolve with the town. Elaine, anything else? There are two changes as we go through. Okay. So what we could do, Mr. Chair, is to go through each license type based on the outline that we provided to, to the board. All right. Want to take us through? Yes. Uh, we'll start with the on alcohol beverages. Under A, there are no contingencies. Uh, that is items A through through I. Any questions? Can you those? hang on one sec, please? So I'm a. Yeah. So we're on no contingencies for all alcoholic beverages, correct? Yeah, yes. Items A through I. Are we not going to read these out? No. 
110 Grill, the Cirrus Corporation Bills Pizza, Carboni's Restaurant, Cornell's Irish Pub, Dynasty Restaurant, Hopkinton Country Club, Co Restaurant, Zio's Quattro, Pan Thai Restaurant. And Mr. Kamalo, is it your assess assessment that there's been no violations against any of these licenses of consequence? Um, none, um, to my knowledge, reported by the permitting offices. I'm aware of a couple myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're of consequence, but there have been a couple of issues. <laughs> issues that were handled through our enforcement departments, yes. Uh, issues that mm -hmm. I'm not aware of issues that then um, were escalated to the board to the level where the board needed to hold a public hearing. So there's no lingering issues? Yeah. Okay. okay. Could we vote these in well, groups as we go through, maybe? Yes. Okay. okay. That, that's the intention. So I request a motion to approve the issuance of licenses outlined in the document entitled Yearly License Renewals for the calendar year 2018, for December 5th, 2018, including, contingency, including contingencies listed for each license, if any. So I'd like to just make to look at your motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Mass General Law Chapter 138, Subsection 12, All Alcoholic Beverages, A through I, on the no contingencies list. So the list that you just read. Second. Okay. Is that okay, Mr. Marlow? Yes, for the board's benefit, there was one. There was one entity that was listed with contingencies. I am pleased to report that that issue has been resolved. Uh, all set, um, the so, Woodville Road and Gun so Club has paid its So that would be Woodville Road and Gun Club, and so yes. that we can include them? Would, yeah. would, you, would you accept that? I would friendly? accept that from the amendment, okay. yeah. Okay, and as for the second? All right, second. Okay. All right, any further discussion? So on those with no contingencies, um, and those that have had an issue associated with their license, where the issue has been resolved, this motion would then reapprove them for one additional year, correct? Yes, all licenses run through the calendar year from. So this would start January, January 1st. January 1st to December 31st. And the licenses are all being issued with standard operating hours allowable? Yes, I, I, I think you'll see that in the licenses you, you'll be signing tonight. And this is also pending, nothing happens between now and December 31st. Should anything happen, um, we will deal with the issues uh, through our general procedures where we send the enforcement department, and then if the issues need to be brought to the board's attention, we'll do so. Okay, thank you. I guess for those that have had an issue along the way, and it hasn't come to the board level, I guess my question to the team is, did they get the message when they had an issue along the way and it didn't come to the board's level? Yes, in, in multiple fo forms. One, the message is sent through the enforcement department. We also do some of the enforcement action collaboratively, so rather than hearing from one department, the entity hears from all the town departments. And also, the board, when dealing with general issues, license issues, I've noticed whenever you're issuing a permit, you do send that general message to everybody else, how the, the town takes the licensing issue seriously. So where's yeah. the bar set in terms of issues that the board is officially or formally notified of versus not? Where's that yeah. line drawn? I mean, you, because you can have issues, right now we're talking about uh, alcoholic beverage uh, group uh, companies and businesses. And certainly I understand that when there are violations that are directly pertaining to the sale of alcoholic beverages, we find that stuff out. Yeah. Um, but there are other violations that can happen um, that can certainly endanger multitudes more people uh, than, than the sale of an alcoholic beverage to someone who shouldn't get it. Um, and so I think that that's, I, I think that that's kind of where Mr. Hur was going. If not, I'm taking it there. Um, you know, where's the line drawn in terms of when we hear about it and when we don't? 
at least from, from my office perspective, we look at the general board policies. If any of the provisions in the board policy is violated, the board needs to know. Mm -hmm. If there's any issue that happens that uh, compromises public safety in general, the board needs to know. Um, if there's any issue that presents a risk, either financially or otherwise, uh, to the town specifically, the board needs to know. Uh, issues that we don't would normally not <coughs> not bring to the board are, for example, if uh, there is a visit to an establishment and the license is not placed at the appropriate location. We will not bring that to the board. Mm -hmm. We will fix that. Uh, there may be an issue where the building inspector perhaps finds something uh, and during his visit asks for a correction and the correction is made. We may not bring that to the board unless it violates a specific policy that the board has put forth. So th those are the general guidelines that we follow, i.e. if anything happens that violates the policy that the board has set forth, the board should know. Okay, so in the case of public safety, um, we're talking about we're talking about patrons, you know, not not necessarily broad public safety, um, and so I guess how is it determined, you know, I, and I know that I know that there are various ways that that the board does find out, but formal communication, uh, when's it determined if there needs to be any type of a hearing or anything like that. That is and I can bring up an example, just a generic example. Yeah. You know, uh, let's say a place has people way over the capacity in their establishment. We saw what can happen in situations like that down in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. you know, it was tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, much worse, you know, tragedy is tragedy, but you know, it can it can endanger a lot more lives than a than a single car accident. Um, and so how, how is it determined? Is that the type of thing that would come before the board for a hearing, you know, to determine any type of disciplinary action on the license, or is that something that doesn't? And, you know, I guess where's the, lo the line drawn? You, you raise an interesting question. In, in terms of capacity issues, there's what we call the enforcement level capacity issue, where we expect the police department to drive around and, and see whether people are complying with the capacity requirements. During those visits, if, 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 if the enforcement officers simply um, make it known to the, to the business owner that they are aware of capacity issues and those issues are rectified there and there on the ground, we don't believe that needs to be brought to the board's attention. Mm -hmm. However, in cases where we have instances where we have gone through the public education process with the property owner and they continue to not comply, we then, through the enforcement process, involve the board. And that's formalized already. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's formalized already, either in the town bylaws or state state laws, in terms of, you know, at, at this point, then there are fines, or at this point, you know, you need to do something structurally in your building and things of that nature. Most of it is codified through the building code and also through the fire regulations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I guess the reason for my questions or comments, and I think we have a motion on the table specifically yeah, these it's, it's alcohol uh, licenses, right? Because right. we all know there's been some violations. I don't think they've been major violations, but God knows what can happen, right? Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate if something awful did happen. Um, I guess as I pondered voting yes or no on this motion, I want people to understand on the list that we're very cognizant of what's going on out there. And you know, while we're renewing this license without having a conversation with anybody or any you know these entities, they need to understand that we're watching the situation and we're making sure people are complying with the laws. And I guess I, I worry that we're not getting that message out there if we just rubber stamp this thing and say have a nice day. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think there's been some stuff going on. And it bugs me a little bit. Okay. Any further discussion? We didn't have a second yet, I don't think. Yeah, we did. Did we? 
Yeah. So could, we, could we include we in the motion that with the stipulation that all license holders in this grouping are notified that the Board of Selectmen has approved the license but holds you to the highest standards going forward? And we'll continue or can we'll continue to hold you to the highest standards going forward. There's a message in that. Yeah. Right? They just get the message. They got a message in a letter saying you better do your job. Is that okay? It is, but it's 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 a, I I agree with you wholeheartedly, hundred percent of what you're saying. But what's the highest standards? It's a very broad stroke. It's very subjective. So w without being able to quantify what the highest standards are, it's hard to, to put that in the. Yeah. And that's where, that's where I was going to go. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's. But I'm with you 100% on to that. Say, but unless we can unless we can add, add put something in writing that we can measure, but with your point twelve. Or okay. something like maybe like violations. Uh, I guess we'll, I think we'll, 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 through the years, yeah, I believe we've made that in, in the last couple of years when we've given out um, uh, license suspensions and that we, we... Well, we hammer away when someone comes in for a suspension or they need a new license. Mm -hmm. But in this annual review, and I've been places recently where there's been multiple violations that I've seen firsthand. And that bothers me. And, you know, it's not just... Uh, for instance, somebody might be overcrowded or have a big gathering. It's people serving people that are obviously hammered. Okay? And things like that just scare me. Mm. And we're just throwing out these licenses and we're not having that conversation. Need I think. Yes, I don't want to patch. Or employees. <laughs> I won't be allowed in any of these places. <laughs> yeah. You still might not be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a pain, yeah. but we. No, you're, you're right. right. No, yeah. 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 We've all probably seen it. Through the chair, suggestion in a comment. I can assure the board and the public that the police department does the, its education and awareness um, a problem regularly with the establishments. That's one. Number two, I, I, I do agree, Brian, that it's it's important that the the board continues to to stress the importance of having all entities comply with the town's regulations. Here's how we can help. When we issue the renewals, we will recirculate the board policies and regulations and request the managers of the entities to ensure that they educate their existing employees and that the orientation program for new employees should include some time spent with the employee going through the regulations. That's what we could do in the office. Because I believe we do have something like that with the uh, the police department does do yeah. um, tips enhancement training with uh, with, uh, with anybody that wants to, wants to come. So I'll, yeah. I'll jump off my <coughs> soapbox with one last statement. Okay, it is obvious to me in Hopkinton that there are establishments that don't understand when they should stop serving somebody, period. Painfully obvious to me. And then whoever is in charge of that needs to hear that. If it's the police, it's the license owner, whoever, they need to hear that. And there are other glaring issues that go along with just over serving, like maybe an employee on duty having a, a drink. That's another problem that, that needs to be you know, outlined to say that you can get into some, some hot water if you're working and you have a beer in front of you or a drink. Yeah, I don't know how the, what the rule is on that, but yeah, I mean, I think it's company policy. They, they must have, they must, may have to be a company policy kind of thing. I don't think so. I don't think the ABCC will say you can be working and having a, a beer. You you can't be drinking when you're working. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure of that. I that, well, that's it. There's a, a code in one of their documents that uh, doesn't actually regulate that. But it's more like a guideline. Oh, okay. So there's not an actual. Okay. Would it be worth having some of these policies written and requiring that the recipients read and sign the document as having read and, and agree to comply? I mean, sometimes you put something in front of someone and say, you need to sign that you agree to this. And it, it kind of causes people to think a little more closely. How about if we yeah. send these new, what happens with these licenses? Do we mail them out? 
mostly we do, but for the most part, people come and pick them up. Okay, when so offices. however they get into the person's yeah. hand, that the license is there, it's signed by the Board of Selectmen, and there's a letter there written by the Board of Selectmen that says, here's your license for next year. Please recognize that you're under, you know, however you want to word that, there's policies and procedures, including tip certification, over-serving, overcrowding, and just name the major things that we worry about in that letter. I would, in future years, um, you know, maybe starting next year, have have a spot right on that license for them to countersign, acknowledging that they've, to, to Ms. Wright's point, that they've gone and read, you know, the regulations, blah, 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 and agree to comply. And the license itself isn't valid until they countersign that. So, Mr. And then that's posted. Yeah. Mr. Powell, can you see, check with town council and see it's probably what, BCC. What, we can, sure. what we can do and what we can't do to yeah. well, ensure compliance? Yeah, we'll work with town council. Um, but for this okay. year, for this year, sending out a letter mm -hmm. or something like that, you know, yeah, we should do just, yeah. I, I agree with Mr. Hart. You know, I mean, I think it's a, it's a good thing just to remind them that we're here, you know, that uh, we're paying attention and that we want to keep Hopkinton a safe community. Health and well-being. Okay. Can, can, can I just ask, I mean, lest that just be taken as, oh, this is just the form letter that they send along with my certificate, if there are a couple of issues that have been particularly noticed now, such as over-serving or overcrowding, or is it worth identifying those in the letter and saying, please pay special attention to these issues? We ask that you be particularly alert. Um, name what we're concerned about. So as opposed you know to a general letter. Well, I mean, a general letter can be just, yeah, yeah, it's a standard, you know, boilerplate letter that yeah. I'm just no, saying. No. might no. not hurt to name, name what the problems are that you're asking people to be more alert to. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote on the motion? Aye. 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 Any, any opposing? Any abstentions? Okay, let's move on to um, the uh, MGL, ch MGL Chapter 138-19C Farmer's Market Pouring Permit for Start Line Brewery with so no contingencies. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, 138 12 malt, uh, wine and malt beverages. Uh, the spoon with no contingencies. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Okay, um, MGL Chapter 138.12, uh, general on premises with contingencies for the Hopkinton Swim and Tennis Club. Uh, building permit has been issued for a retaining wall only. Uh, it's approved by the ABCC pending building permit. So how do we, how does this exist if it doesn't exist? No. Yeah, no, we, and we they're not going to overserve. I don't think at this point. <laughs> not at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that could be can you say over serve when you were when you were uh, oh, speaking oh, about oh, a tennis club. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, we're not even that late oh, yet. Time I time thought you'd be, love that yeah, comment. Oh, but I'm oh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, waiting to say that for now. Trying to be a over here. He's acing it over there. Yeah. As the board may recall, uh, we went through this conversation before the ABCC was comfortable having the license issued prior to the actual premise. Um, um, and I can't believe we were. Yeah, be, be, being, yeah <laughs> being in place. Yeah. And, and that's where we are now. We, we were still waiting for the construction of the facility to, to commence. To commence? But yes. this holds the license with this entity while they get their work done because yes. if, if we don't approve it and it comes back to us then they may lose out on that right so yeah. it makes sense yeah and how many of those do we have available this is wine and malt uh, we have a number of those left. yes we, oh, yeah, we have a number of those i don't have any yeah. okay and it yeah. appears based on driving by recently that there's activity on the site and starts yeah they, they, they built a retaining wall <laughs> only 
Okay, so. I see one of those in my neighborhood, though. <laughs> little tarp. <laughs> so I'd like, I move to uh, approve this up in Tennyson's one quote. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how you vote? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed, any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, chapter 13815, package store, all alcohol beverages with no contingencies. Hopkinton Wine and Spirits, Marty's Light Liquors, and Old Town Liquors. And then there is, uh, oh, okay, it's mine. Well, okay, so those Move three. Approve those. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, um, 138.15, package store, wine and malt beverages only. The Vin Bin, with no contingencies. So moved. Second. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? Uh, with contingencies, Water Fresh Farm, outsati uh, Outstanding Satisfactory Treasurer's Report. Oh. She told me she's resolved. Yeah, I, I believe this issue has been resolved. Um, in fact, what happened was uh, uh, Water Fresh Farm paid their taxes online, and we had not received the communication that that had happened. Okay. Yeah. Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, with, with verification that the contingencies have been taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kamala says he believes that it's taken care of. I just yeah. want to make sure. Okay. It's in my motion. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Yes. Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any Aye. abstentions? No, it passes. Okay. Common victory license only with no contingencies. Bittersweet Company, Hiller's Pizza, Hopkinton Gourmet, The Spoonery, um, Sodexo at EMC, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks Coffee, Subway. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay, one abstention. Okay. All right, with contingencies, Hopkinton Donuts, uh, Satisfied Fire Department Inspection, Marathon Pizza, uh, bu Satisfactory Building Fire Department Inspections. Mm. And then and Price Chopper, Satisfactory Building Department Inspection, Red Barn Coffee, Workers' Compensation Certificate, and Yoga Beach, Satisfactory Fire Department Inspection. Hopkins and Donuts is the gas station next to 495, correct? Yes, and I believe that one is all set. That contingency has been satisfied. Okay, Marathon Pizza. Still has a contingency. Um, so I move to approve as long as the contingencies are met prior to January 1, 2017 or 18. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So just uh, trying to figure out a process on those. Will we be signing the license and then it won't be, they won't be distributed until the contingencies are met? Or will we just get them as they're met? Um, in the past, the board has signed. We do not issue the license until the contingency is met. The whole bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, MGL Chapter 14059, License for Purchase and Sale of Motor Vehicles. Uh, Hoptown Auto Sales. Whitehall Auto Sales and WSAB Enterprise. No contingencies. And then with contingencies, Bulldog Fire Apparatus needs to apply for above ground flamm flammable storage license. Sounds like something for you, Chief. Mr. Chair, I'll move uh, Chapter 1, Section 50, 140, Section 59. Uh, for the sale of motor vehicles with no contingencies and with contingencies. The contingencies resolved by December 31, 2017. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, One thirty. chapter 159A, subsection 1, municipal street license, Metro West Transit Authority, the lift. Um, Operating yeah. here in Hopkinton. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm going to abstain from that just in case I'm on the board of Metro East. Okay. We could do, that's where you probably give us the most input. <laughs> Um, Town of Hopkins livery license, regulations, livery license with contingencies, able limousine, uh, outstanding satisfactory treasurer's report, and Easy Car Boston, completed core reform for workers' compensation certificates. I'd like to uh, move to approve them pending uh, the issues being taken care of before January 1st. Do we have a second? Okay. Any further discussion? Any done? How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? We did it. Way to go. Way to go. All right. Tyson, you're even early. Well done, Mr. Chair. Well Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's having board members like you guys that keep <laughs> us on track. Keep it moving. You're going to be behind it moving. Okay. <laughs> Annual Town Meeting Articles. Board of Selectmen will discuss its own potential annual town meeting articles, including any general bylaw changes. Mr. Hur, do you think that we should probably bring something up? Yes, we should. What do you think? Well, we're going to do that at the next meeting, right? Excellent. Okay, so we will discuss a uh, nuisance bylaw, I believe, then. All right. I think we should call it a property rights bylaw. Well, okay. Good. Fine. Call, call it whatever you want. We're going to discuss it at a future meeting. At a future meeting. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if, if I can just make a comment on that, I, I would just ask that this year we make an effort to bring these articles that mm. have the Board of Selectmen's name on them to us early enough that we have enough time to give proper input and perhaps have revisions made. Um, last year there were a couple that just kind of landed at the last minute and you know, I always feel if it's got the name of a board on it that I sit on, I want to be comfortable with the article, and there's just not enough time to to do input. So I hope we can push that process back so there's enough time for us to be comfortable. With In it. defense of the board of selectmen, the planning board kicked it kicked yep. it over the fence to us at the last minute. And you know, there it and winds uh, up under our name, mm -hmm. and if you're not comfortable with it, there is no no time to work with it. Any, anybody else have uh, anything that, uh, is there anything, uh, Mr. Kamala, uh, uh, Ms. Lazarus, anything that uh, you think we should be looking at? Yeah, we, we are compiling our lists and we will be sharing those lists with the board at your next meeting. So it's a good time of year to get that list and check it twice. Exactly. Oh, right. exactly. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Yeah. Don't be naughty, be nice. That's right. Okay, all right, uh, um, board liaison reports and board invites. Sir, anything to report on? No, you've seen where the superintendent search committee is moving forward, and there's some opportunities to meet the various candidates. Um, at the school committee, I was at the school committee meeting last week uh, for the second sort of round of budget discussions, or maybe it was the third. Um, and they're moving along, continuing to, you know, try to find ways to sort out the special education component of the budget for FY19 which is almost a million dollars, which is a huge number and a big challenge, but one that you know they're obligated to sort through, so they're working at that, but uh, nothing else of consequence to report at this time. Mr. Sorry. Um, nothing for any of the groups that I'm a liaison to, um, you know, to, uh, to the effort that Mr. Hur was mentioning, the superintendent search, uh, you know, I attended a couple of the meet and greets yesterday, uh, along with Ms. Wright. Uh, there are another two tomorrow that I'm planning on attending. And uh, it's clear they have some solid candidates there. Yeah, tomorrow, so yeah, so yeah, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, there's an open, open meeting, I believe 6 to 7.30. Good um, stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, nothing to report, but this week and next week, we have um, Open Space and Keefe Tech School Committee, as well as um, uh, there was one other one that, that we have to meet. Um, oh, the Elementary School Building Committee. Those are the uh, those are the meetings that we have coming up. 
Right. And the, the uh, just a quick update on that uh, elementary school. Uh, it's going gangbusters. They're doing a great job. It's coming together almost ahead of schedule, and they're adhering to all their budgetary constraints. And they're, they're doing a good job there. Yeah, um, nothing really new from last time, except as Ms. Justice mentioned, the school committee very kindly organized a, couple, a series of coffees and luncheons so the members of the Board of Selectmen could have some opportunity to meet with the four uh, superintendent finalists. So uh, Mr. Sestari and I both uh, met Peter Light and Greg Martineau on uh, Monday, and I believe we're uh, uh, going to be meeting with uh, Carol Cavanaugh and Kevin Carney tomorrow afternoon. So I, I'm very grateful that the school committee has uh, accommodated the board in, in that manner. Um, Thursday evening, the uh, Five Town Board of Selectmen meeting will be held in Millis, and I believe Mr. Sestari is going to attend on behalf of the board. Um, I will be at the Center School Reuse Committee, um, and we will be wor they will be working up a, uh, a questionnaire and some um, plans for a public uh, forum to be held sometime in January so we can begin to get more, uh, more input from the public. And uh, that's what I have for now. Excellent. Um, last week I attended the um, Mo the uh, Modera by Mill Creek uh, opening, and it was uh, just just to see what uh, beautiful buildings they, they they built there and at uh, seventy five percent capacity, um, just uh, absolutely gorgeous buildings. Um, but uh, that's all I've got. Uh, Tom Manager's report. Yes, um, the advisory budget meetings um, are proceeding, and in fact, our third meeting is scheduled for December the 12th. Um, in my discussions with the town department heads, it's it's pretty it's becoming obvious that the growth of the town, whilst it has brought in substantial revenue, um, revenues uh, to the town. Uh, we need to continue to have an honest discussion in terms of the levels of service that we were prepared to uh, continue to offer to the uh, citizens of the town, uh, bearing in mind the, the long-term impacts uh, on, on the taxpayers of the town. Um, some of the things that are coming up are, as Brian reported, the, the school the school department is going to be dealing with a, uh, a substantial increase to their budget, um, far beyond uh, the, the guidelines that the, the Board of Selectmen set. On the town side, I'm having very interesting conversations with um, the following departments that have indicated um, some strong needs to augment staffing, uh, fire department, police department, library, land use, um, as well as some technical support for, for the finance team. So this is, this is an exciting budget uh, preparation process. Uh, there will be challenges that uh, we'll be bringing forth to the board for, for more detailed discussions. Just wanted to put you on notice. Yes, um, we we heard tentatively this afternoon from uh, Mass DOT that they may schedule their public hearing for the down, uh, downtown corridor project for January 10th. Um, also, I have asked uh, Dave and the consultants to prepare to come before the board at your next meeting. You will recall that there's a specific concept that the Board of Selectmen endorsed as the project to be submitted to Mass DOT for the 25% review. Um, we have held several public meetings um, in groups as well as in one-to-one -one situations and we have received some feedback that we would like to share with the board. That feedback that we receive, we believe has a substantial, may have a substantial impact on the overall concept that the board approved previously. So um, I'm, I'm giving a heads up that uh, Dave and the consultants will be here at the board's next meeting to review the project. Thanks, Juan. Um, the, um, I, I want to actually request uh, if you could uh, 
see if HR could pull the um, market baskets for um, fire department uh, for the fire chief and town manager so that we can look at uh, the raises to go along with the um, reviews that we had earlier. Can I ask a budget question? And I, yes. I don't know, maybe I should be asking this to the school department, but or I was thinking maybe it was a question on the Keep Tech uh, School, and I know Mr. Tenstone um, participates in that board, but I was just kind of shocked when I looked at the, uh, the numbers that were given to us uh, here on Keep Tech that there's this huge jump. Um, in 20, between 2016 and 2017, their uh, funds actually went down from about 300 and what is it? Am I reading here? Double sets of glasses. Um, 386,000 went down to 352,000, and then in between 17 and 18, it jumped up from 352 to 484,000, and then in 2019, projected to 504,000. So in two years, it's gone from like. 350 to like a half a million dollars, and then it goes up from there. Do we know what's going? I remember there was a discussion about this last year. Do we know what's going on with keep? Do we have that many more kids going to keep tech, or is it just that their costs have gone? It, I was just shocked to see this huge jump because historically we haven't had that many enrollments in keep tech, and I'm just I don't know who to ask, but I was surprised to see that that big a jump and where that's coming from. Do we have yeah. any yeah. It's knowledge? Mr. Tedstone, yeah. maybe? Yeah. How do we go from 350 to half yeah. a million in two I can years? work on that for you and get that number, <laughs> get you an explanation uh, for the next meeting. I don't have that. We'll give like him an agenda yeah. spot. It, that yeah. jumped off the page Give you a consent me. agenda spot. That's good. Yeah. I will. I, I was also one of the ones that was, uh, when I got on last year and I looked at the amount of money that that Keep Tech gets versus the students. It was almost cheaper to have our kids go to Hopkins and then send them to Northeastern for free. Yeah. Um, but um, I will follow up on that as a liaison to that department and have an answer uh, the next meeting. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kamala, you'll remind me of that, right? We work on it. There you go. Mr. You. Kamala, anything right. else? Mr. Lazarus, do you have anything? Working his way to it. Clearly Excellent. Outside. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have a future agenda items. Okay. I guess that's it for today. Well, we haven't done future agenda items yet. We did. Yeah. Well, we did town manager's report that kind of morphed into something else. Oh. Oh. I thought we did future agenda report. That was, yeah. that was the liaison. Right <laughs> future <laughs> town manager. So I just want to say, and I don't have much here, for future board agenda items, oh, I had okay. written it down before it came up, corridor project update. So kudos to you, Mr. Kamala. We really need to track this thing over the next several months. 10-4. Motion to adjourn. Second that. We have a second? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? That's it. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, everyone.